Hey folks, this is Riker. How are we doing today? It is Tuesday. Hope, hope you all have been having a fantastic week. What's going on, everybody? Today we're streaming uh, live to YouTube and Twitch for some Diablo 4 Gauntlet, which I'm given to understand by um, GL and chat that the Gauntlet's not working right now. So we're going to buy some time. <laughs> and... Um, you're gonna get sound working properly. Let's get that going there. That ought to fix it. There you go. Now you can hear stuff. That is good. All right. Hope everyone's doing well. Hop Fio, thirteen month Risa. Appreciate you. Steampunk seventy two. Hope you're doing well. Mega Joe. 15 months. It's your boy. What's up, man? What's going on, everybody? I hope you're having a great... Great start to your week. We're going to claim glory in trials. Man, so, like, jargon is something that I keep I keep bringing up here. So now we have trials and we have the gauntlet. And these are different things that are related somehow. So claim glory in trials. Come forth, wanderer, and fight to earn your place on the new trials leaderboard. Each week, starting today, you can master a new fixed non-linear dungeon called the Gauntlet. So, the dungeon is called the Gauntlet, and what, the Trials is the Trials leaderboards? Could it be that they're calling it Trials leaderboards so that they can have other kinds of leaderboards in the future? Hopefully it's that. Otherwise, there's no reason to have the adjective Trials. They could have just said leaderboards. But, okay. Hopefully, they're paving the way for future content. And that is the reason. Jack Bauer. I've, I've got my dehydration fluid here. My coffee. My cuppa. My cuppa Joe. What's up, Ryan Loring? How you doing? Oh, it's working? All right. Wonderful. The gauntlet is now working. Awesome. I tried out some Helldivers too yesterday. I'm enjoying it preliminarily. Okay, in this endgame dungeon, mastery and cunning will be the tools with which you'll strive for a high score. The score you receive from each run is based upon how many proofs of might you can collect within uh, 8 minutes. Proofs of might can be earned by killing monsters dwelling in the gauntlet, opening chests, pillars. These increase the number of proofs you earn by providing a... Am I the only one seeing this? I know that says, and I know that's supposed to say score. Is it cut off, or does it say scar? <laughs> anyway, it's, it's supposed to say score. Providing a score... Wait. A score multipliers? Wait. Anyway, I know what it means to say. I'm just confused that how does this happen. Uh, or resurrecting recently slain monsters. You can run the gauntlet for each week to your heart's content, pushing to earn more proofs of might and a higher score each time. You mean a higher scar, right? Your scars from the gauntlet will earn you a seal marking your rank and a minor cash at the end of each run. A cash of trial. Okay. So, you will earn a seal with a rank and a minor cash. Okay. End of each run. Wait. You're not getting a cash at the end of each run. You're not going to get a reward literally every time you run the gauntlet, are you? If so, that's crazy. I thought it was only every time you earn a new seal. A cash of trials based on all seals earned at the end of the week. Each containing a guaranteed ancestral legendary item. I guess you are earning stuff every run. Wow, interesting. I might do this more then. The Conqueror's Crest Mount Trophy for those who place top 100 in any ladder. Permanent Glory in the Hall of the Ancients for those who place top 10 in any leaderboard. This behemoth test of skill can be accessed by any normal or hardcore seasonal realm character. It's only seasonal? Okay, that's fine. Uh, that has achieved World Tier 4, but Sanctuary's most hardy adversaries dwell in this dungeon. Eh, respectfully disagree. So it is strongly recommended to proceed with caution, and once you've hit level 100, the gauntlet concludes each week 
on Tuesday, 8 a.m. PT, with a new, completely different gauntlet emerging the same day at 10.15. Ah, that's why. Okay. Yeah. So the gauntlet starts at 10.15. That's why it was inaccessible for the first few minutes after patch. Okay. That's reasonable. Do you have what it takes to carve through the gauntlet's hordes and cement your name on one of the many ladder leaderboards? Are they ladder leaderboards now, or are they trials leaderboards? Jargon! Head to the southwestern port in Giacol now to prove your might. Have a happy holiday in hell. Happy holiday. <laughs> this is supposed to launch with, um, the, the um, I guess, the lunar event. <laughs> so there have been some, uh, yeah, okay. There was a video that launched at some point that had, like, the wrong dates for, um, yeah, that showed that they'd been pushing back the gauntlet. So I'm, I'm assuming the holiday they're referring to is they broke this up for the Lunar New Year. <laughs> Alright. Okay, we got it. Could I learn more? Nah, it's gonna take us a website. We're good. We're Gucci good. We're gonna dive in. I'm gonna take a look at this. Ah. Uh. Alrighty. Coffee for the win. Yes. Okay, it says Scar for you guys, too. Alright. I really hope the re is a big win for D4. Yeah, me too. Uh, me too. They really need a win. And I have... I... I... I'm afraid that I have high hopes for it. It is the greatest opportunity to really turn around the narrative about the game. I'm doing great, Miles. Hope you are as well. It's pronounced Scar because the E is silent. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. So that's how you, that's why you spell it Scar. That makes sense. Logical. Gromas, what's up, man? Kino. E Equino Zadie. Hello, welcome to the stream. Curious, how you doing? In-game, press Y. There is next to Codex and Challenges a button trials. Maybe they added more trials later. Yeah, I hope it's that. Not yet placed. Yeah. So that's cool. If Honestly, if it's paving the way for future leaderboards, that's fantastic. All right, clan. Ah, our clan is back. Thank goodness. Okay. We had a heart attack earlier. The clan was temporarily gone. Um, okay, key binding config one. Boom. All right. So I'm going to start off by doing some solo gauntlet. Once I'm satisfied with that, then we'll do twos, then we'll do threes, then we'll do fours. That is assuming... Okay, I guess my objective is to reach Seal of the Worthy in each category. I don't care about placing, like, on the leaderboard, but I just want to get the Seal of the Worthy. Which, my understanding is that's the, the highest score Seal. So, Solo, Barbarian Ladder. Dare to enter the Gauntlet in this week's Trial. Slay Monsters, blah, 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 blah. Okay, Progress, not placed. Rewards, Earn... Contains ancestral, legendary, or uniques. There's apparently a good um, a good likelihood to get uniques there. It all looks pretty. This week, filters. You can filter by platform. Okay. Dungeon the Gauntlet Ladder. Solo Barbarian Ladder. Alright, we're gonna dive in. Ultra Mega Jesus. New sub. Welcome. Thanks for subbing. I uh, might have missed a Darkuno. Sorry about that. 80 month resub. Hope you're doing well. Oh, it just came in now. Alrighty. So, you don't have to be level 100 to do the Gauntlet. It's just recommended. But you can probably start it reasonably, like, around level 80. You're just gonna have a harder time completing it. But you can try. It's just monsters are at a certain level of difficulty. Okay, so we click trials and it takes us right right there. Words are hard, man. Words are hard, for sure. Honestly, I was never excited about the Gauntlet, but I expected it to at least be fun to do on occasion. After the campfire chat, I'm like, this does nothing. It seems so lame, I literally forgot about it. And I was like, oh right, that's happening today. When I start a stream notification. So I'm just hoping that the change in what the objective is... because. This isn't just running a dungeon, right? Like, 
we had dungeons. Then we had Nightmare Dungeons, which are just harder dungeons, effectively, right? Like, there's affixes and stuff, but the objective doesn't really change. It's still just dungeons that are harder. Then Abattoir of Zir came out, and it's like, well, now it's super-duper dungeons. It's still dungeons. It's still just harder dungeons. Um, but this is something different. It's, yes, it's a dungeon, but your objective is different in that you're not just, like, going through it and then fighting a boss at the end. You are on a timer. Now it's more potentially about speed. It's about efficiency. So, like, theoretically, this seems like something that Rank should be. Rank one barb. Rank one barb. <laughs> Maybe for you, Falu. Maybe for you. All right. Yeah, so Gauntlet has just launched now. We're going to dive into our first Gauntlet. See how it goes. Hi from Quebec City. Salut, Rick. Ça va bien? What uh, reward does the Seal of the Worthy get you? Uh, we don't know exactly. It's gonna be some. Ca it's gonna be the best cash that you can get, in essence. Okay. Uh, open the gate to begin. This way is blocked until the trial is complete. Wait. Okay. So am I already in it? I'm already in it. Ah. Okay. So we're already in it. Okay. So. In my opinion, this isn't about jargon per se, it is about using the same wording for the same thing. A certain jargon is helpful so everyone knows what is what, but not when it is poorly written and do not use the same words. Fair? Fair. Yeah, so, so, I harp on jargon. Jargon is, like, jargon exists because to some degree it is always necessary. Some amount of jargon is necessary. Okay, so, no, what am I, oh my god, what are my buttons? I haven't played D4 in a while now. Okay. Oh, I'm pressing my last epoch buttons. Oh gosh. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm I'm getting back into it. So, I'm not super spec. Okay, we got a good bonk there. All right. Enemy horde incoming. Lethal shrine does what? Oh, good. It spawns monsters. That's good. Okay, cool. Why is my two-handed sword stuff ranking up right now? Alright. Did that... Did, did my weapon mastery reset? So, my current strategy is to not put too much thought into it and just see if I can brainlessly... Okay, that is a Pillar of Proving. I forgot which one that is. Ah, uh, Pillar of Proving is probably not the respawn one. Nah, it is. Dang it. Okay, we blew, we blew that. So now we know for next time. Pillar of Proving is the respawn. Just call the Pillar of Respawn, man. Like, to help us out. God... Pillar of Resurrection, Pillar of, you know... <laughs> Give us some hint in the jargon as to what the thing is. Pillar of Proving is the respawn one. If I remember that. Because there's two different ones. Channeling Shrine is fine. The other one gives you a score multiplier. Yeah, first one is basically I just want to, like, calibrate without really thinking too much on what the plan is. Okay, this is a, another Pillar of Proving. We're not going to pop that one because that's going to respawn all the monsters. I think we only get two of those. Uh, I don't have any keys, so I cannot open there, but there is a key there. Can you not bring up the map? No, M is map. Okay. That's fine. I am not doing well. Uh, pillar of Proving again. Pillar of Glory. Hey, this is what I wanted. So Glory gives you a skull mul uh, skill... Sorry. Score multiplier. A scar multiplier. So I think what I'm going to actually do is... Now consume my pillar here to respawn these guys while I still have my score multiplier active. That might bite me in the butt.
might have been a waste, but uh, we'll, we'll find out. Oh, we got a key. So we have one key. I forgot to keep track of how many keys the other one needed. This is a pillar of glory. Where do I see my duration on the pillar of glory? I think it just ended, if I'm not mistaken, so... Was that a chest? Okay, I got some score out of that. Okay, I'm gonna hit the re the resurrect here. Just because I'm not going back to that corner. It's not happening. If I can hit 200k, I think that's enough to reach Seal of the Worthy. But I'm going to be running low on monsters, is the issue right now. Last week's shrine. Um, I think I need to start looping, but I'm going to go check this corner quickly. Oh, are these guys... Highlighted because they drop keys? They are highlighted because they drop keys. Interesting. So they tell us. They tell us who the key holders are. I'm navigating down a branch that I have not explored before. Probably not the best move. Yeah, my goal is to hit 200k. If I can hit 200k, I think I'm in an okay spot. Ah, shoot, we'll go here. Okay, I think we're good. So, I don't know. My suspicion is 200k is what's needed for Seal of the Worthy. But maybe I am grossly underestimating. Okay, here's where all the chests are. Yeah, I should have waited for one of the mega chests. Okay, strategy-wise, we enter from there. So we could have gone this way, around that corner. Two twenty score. Okay, now we're starting a loop. But we did respawn those monsters there, so should be fine. I think we've incidentally made good use of our respawns. Um, should we go get the big boy? Let's go get the big boy. Hold on, does that give us anything? Yeah, that's a good amount of score from the boss. Can we hit 250? Come on, 250. I don't know if we can hit 250. No, this density. No, we're not going to hit 250, but hey, we blew past our target of... 200 at least. Oh, oh, we got 250. Yeah, all right, cool. 250 done. Easy. All right. And that is Seal of the Worthy. First shot. Nice. Okay. So that's all I cared to do. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's nothing more for me to accomplish on this specific run because anything else is just bragging rights at this point it's leaderboard stuff 
Uh, Seal of the Worthy gets you the best reward. What I might do now is go on my Necromancer, who's substantially weaker, and see if I can still get a Seal of the Worthy. That will likely be a lot more challenging. But here, let's see leaderboards. We are rank... Of course, Rob is number one. Look at that. Look at that disgusting score. I love it. 487,000. 487,000. BC, how you doing? Ultra Mega, what's up? Batman is top one. Oh, man, of course he is. Jump to me. I am rank. Where, where even am I? I said jump to me, and it didn't jump to me. Where's jump to me? None of these are my names. What is this? Oh, here I am. Okay, 857. Nice. Well, we, we got top 1,000. Done. But this is what's going to be interesting to compare. So rank 1 on the Necromancer, 383. Rank 1 on Barbarian, 487. Whoa! Sorcerer at 600! What? Rogue at 353. Rogue in last place right now. And Druid at 526. Wow! Sorcerer! What is going on with Sorcerer? How do you, um... What is this build? Is it Ball Lightning? No, it's not Ball Lightning. It's Chain Lightning. Or is it an Arc Lash? Oh, it's Arc Lash? What is this bill, man? You you and your Shaco. Okay, okay, okay. Now let's see the group play. Two man is only 597? That is... Beat by a singular sorcerer. Even three man? What? Okay, it's because no one's doing two threes and fours. But, alright. I want to see if... Okay, investigate the Horn of Trials. The what now? What do you want me to do? Can I leave dungeon to do that? Curious thing, top 100 to get a mount trophy or something like that, which to be honest is stupid because top 100 is a very small number of people and naturally those won't be the best players for the most part because there's too much RNG involved with your luck, gear drops, etc. I mean, it's, it's probably going to be the most dedicated players getting it. It's not really rewarding skill players unless every player has the same gear character like in D3 Challenge Rifts. I don't like this. Um, it's it's certainly more fair, but um, it, it's still going to come down to how much time you have to put into it to keep trying over and over like throughout the week, right? Like if, if you have 10 hours a day every day to keep trying over and over, your odds are a lot better than a more skilled player who has like three hours a week. Because they're also less likely to want to spend those three hours just slamming this one thing. Do you think D4's itemization requires a complete overhaul to fix it? Complete is a strong word. Uh, it requires a massive overhaul. Bebo, what movie did you see? So yeah, what I'm wondering is, is I, I don't think it's always going to be 200k. I mean, maybe it is. But I figured it might depend every week. Like, you might need a different amount of score to reach Seal of the Worthy. Unless it is always 200k. And that's simple, I guess. Don't tell me you need to complete at least one run to, to see the leaderboards. You do. Arc Lash is a Sork meta now? Ah, okay. Okay, so we're going over here. Horn of Trials. Boom. Cool. Earn. So yeah, because we got Seal of the Worthy, we get one, two, three. We get all of these, I guess. Now, I thought I was supposed to get some kind of reward just for having done this once. Is that not the case? Browse the top thousand heroes in each ladder. Yeah, okay. Oh, I did get a cache. No, I didn't. Did I? Yeah, I must have gotten this from now. Murmuring cache. Unlocking the Horn of... Oh, that's from unlocking the Horn of Trials, though. Let's see what we got. Yeah, some ovals. Okay. Got some ovals. You don't have to be level 100 to do the gauntlet, but it's designed for level 100 players, so you'll have a little bit of a harder time. Madam Web, oof. It was bad, but you had fun? Ah, oh, it's, you know, it's... 
entertainingly bad movies. That's okay. I think it's going to be a floating number because they will adjust as they have more people doing the gauntlet. Makes sense. Makes sense. D and Fla. Uh, Dylan saying, haven't played D4 since launch. Is it worth coming back? I would, I'm given, if you haven't played since launch, wait for season four. It's not too much longer, and that's going to include the itemization rework. So you might as well, like, wait another, what is it going to be, a month or something? If you've already waited this long. Check my mastery rank when I'm done. Good call. Um... Yeah, that was weird. It's all 10 out of 10, but it was just, like, ranking up for no apparent reason. Hmm. Thank you, Matthew. Who's the most famous... Oh my gosh, Miles. <laughs> oh, God. I can't read that. I can't read that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Will you face the gauntlet with a specific build, or will you make a custom build? I'm not gonna make a custom build for it, no. Um, okay, hold on. I am gonna do it on my Necromancer now. So, this character is significantly less powerful. I don't know... I, I might need to try a couple of times on this one to get the Seal of the Worthy. But wait a minute, hold on. Is there a point to me doing it? Do I get rewards for each character that I get to Seal of the Worthy? Yeah, I, I must. Yeah, I think you do get the reward on every character you do it on. So there is a point to do it on more than one character, is my understanding. Arctic Tiger Bear, two month reset. Hope you're doing well. Falu, thank you for the cheers, by the way. Six ninety one ball lightning. Oh my gosh. What is the meta? Holy crap. Portage power, five month reset. Appreciate ya. You get the rewards of the weekly reset. Okay, makes sense. That is reasonable. Okay, so let's, uh, yeah, let's try on the, I don't even remember how I, how do I play this Necromancer? Maybe I should go back to town first. Uh, I haven't touched this character since like week one of season or something. Alright, I had got my Lidless Wall and then I stopped playing. Uh, and I moved on to Barbarian. Um, hmm. Okay, right, it's a Bone Spear build. Let's just salvage all this. Ah, uh, whatever. Actually, that's a pretty decent roll on the Jug, but... Yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm probably not going to bother gearing up this character anymore, so I should just delete everything, honestly. Um, it is a better Wind Striker. <sighs> Getting... ...taunted by it. Alright, uh, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to go salvage this, and then we'll, uh, we'll try. And then once I get Seal of the Worthy on this one, then we'll try in a team of two. And then a team of three, and then a team of four. Alright, so... Trials, join, let's go. Gauntlet already started, Singing Games. Gauntlet already started. People are already obliterating the objectives. Okay, how do I play this build? I don't remember. It 
So I'm gonna, I think, try a different tactic and go the other way. Mind you, this is going towards the uh, the rooms with the keys. So it's interesting, I don't remember seeing them have the Key Wardens on the map last time, in the preview. I didn't notice when uh, they were casting. But yeah, now we know who drops the keys. Yeah, as you can see, I'm killing a lot slower on this build. This one's gonna be trickier. I might need to actually use strategy. So I have two keys, but I want more than two keys. Because I want to open one of the golden chests, and the golden chests need what, four? see. No, wait, never mind. They don't? It's just one key for any chest. Well, so why would I ever open a schmuck chest? Oh my gosh. Alright, well that's good to know. Enemy horde incoming. From whence? Okay, bye Blood Bishop. Yeah, so we're not doing great on time. Uh, this is going to be extremely challenging to get to 200k within the time allotted. I need to play smarter. Yeah, five minutes remain. I'm at a quarter of the score that I need. Not good. I have not yet found one of them things. Okay, so this is a complete loop. Now, I know that I have a respawn thing. Um around this bend, but yeah, I don't think this is the right strategy. I think I should have gone northwest. Ooh, the music has gotten more ominous. Yeah, because this loop has a lot more of the pillars and such. Thing is, it's a waste to use it right now. I gotta get the score multiplier one, I think. That's what it comes down to. And then save up all my keys on the loop down to the key room. And then just bop them all there. I don't think the keys reset, right? Okay, at this point, I think I just need to, like, run through and... It's another pillar of proving is that issue. 
I guess I just need to bop them. Like, they do spawn some good monsters. At least in this area right here. See, we don't have the key to open this. But now I know I should save all my keys for the golden chests. If it just takes one key. There's like never a reason to do... The weak key. I'm gonna have to find a way to double my score for the next run. That's gonna be tough. So I'm ignoring the bosses just because I think it's gonna take me too long to kill the bosses to be worth the score. Okay, which one is the pillar of... I can't even see it, man. Pillar of glory, go. Oh. I need that score multiplier. Okay, bring him back. Yeah, so I have to quite literally double my score on the next run. But this is a really good... Like, getting that Pillar of Glory. I don't know how long it lasts. I gotta pay attention to how long it lasts. There's another keyboard in here. a pillar of glory again. Yeah, I gotta like just instantly go to the pillars of glory. Uh, might as well bop this chest just because... Okay, pillar of proving, respawn them. Okay, so I'm not going to need to double my score, which is a little reassuring. Now, interestingly, we also respawn the, uh, the Key Wardens. Now, the question is, do I try to beeline for that? Or do I do the North Loop? Hmm. Salutations, Dragon RB. How you doing? Looking forward to the Necro we work. Uh, looking for a break in work to open the new patch version. Regarding PS. PS. My trials say coming soon still. I don't see a quest anywhere. Huh. Uh, try restarting the game. Is there any other class you'd like to see in Diablo 4? Uh, yeah, so I have a couple answers to that. So, like, I would like to see the devs add a completely new class that is their own mark on the series. I would like to see a sword and board kind of paladin analog, because I know that would make a lot of people happy. And then I'd like to see something kind of like uh, a take on a holy character cleric type character that's like an inquisitor where it's like a um like a sword and board mage like a sword and board holy mage i guess you can say so not the same like a paladin uh more on the caster side i guess and like when i say inquisitor i mean like leaning into that whole like i will purge you with fire kind of thing You think the hardcore guys all race at the beginning of the next of the season next season for the first character to score X amount in Gauntlet? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Who knows what those mad lads will do? How you doing, Pike? Q 
Curious got ranked 227 on his first try. Nice. I see no point in ever trying to get 100, though, because it's too boring. But I guess it might be worth doing weekly for the reward. When do we get them? Uh, you get them at the end of the week, is my understanding. So, yeah, it's going to be like Challenge Rift, right? Like, D3 Challenge Rift, it's going to be something, like, you know, you do get a little word. You're last on the Necro board at 810. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, uh, strangely, no gauntlet in Eternal Realm. I don't know if it's going to come in the future, but... Psycho God Tier. What's up, man? Jester Mask, Seba Bansi, I hope you're doing well as well. Uh, so I'm reading both YouTube and Twitch comments, but you gotta put Riker, or rather, if you put Riker in the message, it gets highlighted for me, and then I'll definitely see it. Hey, cheers, Rod B. The gauntlet is indeed out now. Okay, so we're going to try again. Wait, did I get a thousand more than Nem? <laughs> oh, to reach Seal of the Worthy, we don't need 200,000. We need like, I think it was 175 because it said we needed 16k more to reach Seal of the Worthy. Okay, that's reasonable. I can do that. 855, and where's Nem? How do I filter to friends, players, friends, or clan, even? No entries! Amazing! Our clan does not exist. Of course it doesn't. Apply filters. No entries. I have no friends. True. Okay. You are no longer in the leaderboard. Nice! Alright. <laughs> Cool, 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 cool. Ground Zero, 38 month resub. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, so folks, if you were playing before the patch, you need to exit game, let the game patch, and then relaunch. The epic beastie gamer plays Diablo, Raiden, more. Hey, cheers, buddy. Appreciate ya. Where did the name Riker come from? Yeah, so I've been using the name Riker since I was like 12 years old. Um, at the time, if you Google searched Riker with this spelling, it would turn up precisely zero results. So I know I was the very first Riker with this spelling on the internet. Um, where did I come up with the name? So a little bit of is lost to... Uh, the exact details are a little lost to lore, but I started... I, I don't remember if I first used it as a name or if I first used it in a novella I was writing for a character. But I know that I, I named a character, one of the main characters in the novella that I was writing, uh, Riker. I know that I was using that name myself in Unreal Tournament 99. Um, I don't remember which came first, though. I don't know if maybe I came up with the name for the character and then I liked it and then I used it myself. Or if I came up with the name for myself and I, I wanted to name the character that. But I know that it came to my mind because in the original Unreal, not Unreal Tournament, but Unreal released in, I think, 97, the, the premise is it's a sci-fi where you are a prisoner being transported on a ship to a prison planet. This ship crash lands on an alien planet. The name of that ship was the Vortex Rikers. R-I-K-E-R-S. So that is what had Riker on my mind. And then I guess because of Star Trek, I was aware that Riker is a name. As opposed to a just a noun, I guess. Uh, and then I just wanted to spell it in a way that no one else would think of spelling it. So thus changing R-I-K-E-R to R-H-Y-K-K-E-R. Uh, I started by changing the I to a Y because Ys are just more cool than I's. I mean, let's face it. Um... Then I wanted to make it even more cool. I added an H, a silent H, R-H-Y-K-E-R, -E uh, because why not? And then I felt that the name didn't feel visually balanced. 
it was like too front heavy, so I added a second K to make it feel a, bl a little bit more better balanced. And uh, that's how it came to be. Big man, Lex Store, new sub via Prime Gaming. Welcome, thank you for the sub. I appreciate you. As a reminder, folks, if you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you are automatically also a Prime Gaming subscriber, which allows you to freely subscribe to one at Twitch streamer per month. All you gotta do is hook up your Amazon and your Twitch accounts. Yeah, so I'm technically not named after Commander Riker, but I am fine with people thinking that because uh, I like that character. <laughs> I appreciate you, Marcolina. My barbarian was a charge Hoda barb. My necro is a bone spear necro. Okay, so I need to get like 16k more score. Let's see if we can do it on this next run. Um, Oh, you maintain your explored map. Ah, ho, ho, ho. I thought we would have to memorize the layout, but you get to see where you've been. I like that. Okay. So, instead of me going this way, this was a bad plan, in my opinion. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go up here. Loop. Up here. Um, If I remember correctly, there's some guys with the keys up there. Actually, hold on. Okay, let's think this through a little bit, because oh, it even tells us which they are. Wait, it's only saying proving. Why is it not showing me the altars of glory? That's bizarre. Uh, okay, so it's giving us incomplete information for whatever reason. Um, what I could do is I could come up here, go here, then here. Because I know it was like this cluster and this cluster, I think is where we had the Altar of Proving next to an Altar of Glory. I need to pay... So, this is actually a really good loop. I gotta pay more attention, though, to how long the Altar of Glory lasts. Dang it. Does anyone know how long does an Altar of Glory last? That's the score multiplier one. Why does it say rank 189, but on leaderboards I'm 277? Because one of those hasn't updated yet. Uh, I appreciate you, Bebo. I wish I had his height as well. I wish I had the height of Commander Riker. <laughs> uh, I'm, Urtai, I've been blasting last epoch, but today was the launch of Gauntlet and D4, so we're trying that out. Can always go back to last epoch in the future. No problem there. You don't need to go to the Horn of Trials to get into the Gauntlet. No matter where you are, you can go to the Collections tab... Click Trials and start to go directly into the Gauntlet. Indeed, that is correct. I just happened to be here because this is where I last was. Because you have to go there once. After your first Gauntlet, I think. Where can we read this novella? Ah. Uh, <laughs> well, I wrote it when... I started writing it when I was 12. And I finished writing it when I was like 15 or 16. So, um, it, it is very high quality sci-fi. Um, but no, it's never been published. I, I did finish it, because at first I was writing it for fun, and then I finished it as a school project. But, um, <laughs> I've not published it anywhere. <laughs> Maybe I should go back one day and take a look at it and cringe. Riker Games, LLC. You're from uh, Unreal Tournament back in the day? Nice. Man, facing worlds. Good old sniper map. Did I ever get into Unreal 2003 and Unreal 2004? Not as much. I kind of skipped. I, I played them a bit. But then I went to UT3. Which I know like people look down on. But um, UT3. So UT99 was like my. Was one of my big loves of gaming. Like. I mostly talk about, like, how, you know, Diablo, um, StarCraft, uh, to a lesser degree, Warcraft were, like, really big games in my youth, but UT99 was right up there as well. Um, like, a defining game of my youth. But then, uh, UT3, right, released in 2007. I got really serious into it, I think, in 2000... 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 
It might have been 2010 or 28, 2008. I don't remember. Anyway. If there's one single game that I was at my peak as a gamer, that was in Unreal Tournament 3. Um, so, I don't know how to phrase this correctly. Maybe people can help me phrase this correctly for the future. But, like, the game that I was the best at was UT3. And I don't mean that I was better than other people. I mean that my personal best in any game was in UT3. I would probably be the equivalent of, like... Um, I don't know about Grandmaster. I was like top between 2.5 to 5% of players. Like at my peak, my kill to death ratio was 4 0 to, to, to 1. Um, that was like the game that like I took the most serious. And like I would, I wouldn't just play the game. I would like train. Like every day I would train, I, like as in play specifically to get better. Uh, and do drills and, like, exercises to get good. And, like, I would memorize map layouts and memorize timings. And, like, even when I'm not in the game, I'm, like, planning... Like, I'm, like, drawing maps and strategies, like, in my free time and stuff. Like... And, like, already at the time, I was, like, what? I don't know, mid-20s? So, like, my reflexes weren't as good. Like, my aim and stuff wasn't as good as when I was, like, a, an adolescent playing UT99. But I had... To, so I, I realized I had to make up for it with, like, just really good strategy. Like, knowing all the map layouts by heart. And, like, just being able to outthink enemies. And just, yeah. Just with sheer knowledge and strategy. But those are glory days from long ago. And they're long behind me. And now I'm just a scrub. I was at my prime. Okay. I like that, Ultra Mega. So the game at which I was at my prime as a gamer was UT3. Put up a novella as a Patreon reward, you know? <laughs> okay. Uh, should I go back and, like, re-edit it, though, to be less embarrassing? Or do I put it up as it is? Or maybe I do two versions. You remember which video when I started saying, hey, folks? I don't remember which video exactly. I do know that, like, my first serious gaming video was a, an Unreal Tournament 3 video. But... I know that I started saying, hey, folks, for the silliest of reasons... Because I think I saw, I used to say, hey, guys. And then I just had this moment, like, if I say, hey, guys, am I, like, alienating women? <laughs> like, ra like realistically, no. Of course not. That's stupid to think that. But that was my thought at the time. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Did you know there's a boss in D3 named Riker? Yes. So, what happened was, at some point in the life of Diablo 3... Blizzard took the names of about a dozen community members and added us as random names that could spawn for, for monsters. It was really cool. Has there been any word on whether or not D4 devs are working, allowing PC users to zoom out the field of view and camera so it's not static when you're in town, on foot, or on horse? That's a great question. And so of the many things that the community has requested that the devs said that they're either going to do or looking into doing, that is one thing where they have not said that they're doing that. They've not said the opposite, but, like, there is no indication that that is something that they are going to do. They might come out and surprise us with it, but, like, as of such, they have said nothing to indicate that they will do that. Don't edit it. It's history. We want to see you at your cringiest. Okay, okay. Any plans to make Last Epoch lore videos? Um, I don't have plans for it. I could potentially be persuaded into doing it, but, like, in general, the lore videos don't have a really big audience, even the Diablo ones. Uh, the Diablo ones I do out of, like, sheer passion and joy for the material, and because I know there are other people that are really passionate and joyful about the material, and it's to make them happy, I don't know that there's an audience for the Last Epoch stuff as of yet. Uh, I do like Last Epoch lore more than an average game that I play. Um, but, like, given I know very little about Last Epoch lore, it's going to take a lot of work for uh, a potentially little impact. And so, when it comes to videos, it's, it's not like a binary, like, do I make this video or not? It's, if I'm making this video, what video am I not making, right? It's always about opportunity cost. It's, if I'm doing X, then I'm not doing Y. So... 
is there a why video that would have bigger impact that I ought to be focusing on that'll make more people happy or, or help more people um, kind of thing. Like if like I, I really, I genuinely actually really enjoy doing the lore videos. Like if I can just make lore videos for all, like a bunch of games that I care about and those get views, like I'd love to do that. Um, but like, again, even the Diablo lore videos, like don't perform super well. So I don't have high hopes about like an alt game. That's why once I got sponsored to make a lore video, which was like the happiest day of my life to be sponsored to make a video that's fun to make. Like that was awesome. Okay. So what is our plan? Uh, okay. So here and here, I think again, are the two most important things to grab. I think if I just do this loop, I'm fine. I could ignore this altogether. So that's a respawn. That's a respawn. Okay, let's do the plan. So I'm going to not do this. I'm going to get that at the end. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go grab that. Do that loop. Come up here. Do this loop. Um, Shit. Come here. Hold on. Okay, I come here. I do this. Then I come back this way. Yeah, yeah, okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Come up here. Go here. Backtrack to here. Come up here. Do this. Go up here. Then backtrack to here, to here, to here, to here, to hit this, and then redo. Okay. I got to remember this. Okay. So that's the plan. That's the plan. We come here. <laughs> okay. Jeez. So the plan again. We come up here. We go here. We go here. We come back here. We come here. We come here, we come here, we come back, 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 shit, <laughs> what was the plan, then here, then here, then here, then this, and then, uh, then we can just actually just run this all back, okay, okay, so one more time, here, 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 uh, fuck, Ah, whatever. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It's gonna work. It's, it's gonna go great, guys. We're gonna get it on this one. <laughs> it's gonna go great. No plan. Plan's instantly out the window. It's a DD and d campaign. You come up with a plan. You spend, you spend two hours with your friends arguing over a plan. Then you go to set it in motion, and within five minutes, the plan's gone to shit, and you're improvising. That's... That's the experience, right? My D&D folks know the deal. Okay, so this was Seal of Glory, or whatever. Pillar of Glory. So it'll be really sad if... Having a plan, we're actually going to do worse than when we had no plan and we we're just messing about. Okay, let's go grab this to respawn them. And the plan was to backtrack completely, yep. Yeah. I remember that part of the plan. Our seal of glory is over. So let's keep going now. Coming back here. The thing is, this was like terrible density. So backtracking through this is not actually a good idea. I should have made that judgment call. Well, that's okay. So now we're coming up this way. We're going to loop here.
I'm gonna do another one of these. Uh, hold on. Don't touch these. Get the glory. Frozen. It's terrible. Okay, I think we hit the respawn. Hit the respawn. Here we go. Yeah, okay, this is already going a lot better. Yeah, we're gonna hit 100k before we're even. Um, you know, I'm gonna go loop this way. I know this wasn't part of the plan, but I'm altering the plan. Got my key. We're doing well on time. Yeah, because we, 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 we respawned these guys. We're going to go... Oh, no, no, no! Ah, it's, it's fine. It's okay. We're going to make time. It's fine. Forgot that I had a good reason for picking the path that I picked. I don't trust myself. We're on track, though. I'm just gonna do a little more of a loopy. Um, yeah, because that's the thing, though. Shit. Ah, uh, it's fine. It's okay. It's fine. Yeah, I should have saved that key for that, but that's okay. I'm gonna sort of try to kite some of these guys around here. We're losing time now is the problem. We're gonna go respawn these guys now. Three minutes. I don't like this. We're not. Some time here. Oh no, I should have gone up that way. Shoot, shoot. Yeah, we're gonna loop around this way. We're gonna get another key around here if I remember correctly. Three minutes. Ah. Oh. It's gonna be tight. Boy. I don't know. I don't know, guys. We might actually legitimately do worse than the first time. Shoot. Come on, man. Give me something to work with. Two minutes. I think we're gonna get it just just we're not gonna hit two hundred, we're gonna we might hit the one seventy five, and I think we need one seventy five. Oh, it's gonna be close though. if we're gonna make it. Oh, no. Shoot, okay. We respawn everything, but where do we go now? Like, this is not good density anywhere. Oh, jeez. Oh, can we get 25k in a minute?
Okay, we beat our previous score, but it's not looking good. Oh no, we're not gonna make it! Dang, we're not gonna make it. Ah, uh, there's no chance. No chance. Ah, oh, shoot, man. Where are all the monsters? Thought they were supposed to respawn! Thirty seconds, it's not happening. Yeah. We need a better plan. Oh man, okay. Wow, well, we beat our previous score, but not by all that much. So it feels like not all the monsters respawn, only some of them. We're so close too. No, we're we're not that close. We need another fifteen. No, wait a minute. Yeah, how much do we need? Oh, we're gonna be off by like five thousand. Or seven thousand I think we're off by seven thousand. Seal the iron willed. Seven oh seventeen thousand. Yeah, we needed one seventy five. Okay. Okay. Alright. We gotta get this. The monsters are on their union break. <laughs> Ball thing, new sub via Prime Gaming. Welcome, thank you for the sub. Appreciate ya. Big man, Lex store. In case we didn't call it out, I think we did. Yeah. Can you make a Diablo and Last Epoch crossover fanfic? That'd be hilarious. Travel back in time to the time of Diablo. What's up, King Tut? How you doing? Hey, cheers, EM Storm. How about liking the gauntlet? I appreciate all your work. I look forward to future coverage for No Rest for the Wicked. Looks incredible. Hey, cheers, Ultron 40k. It's a lot of fun. No, that is to say, Wicked is a lot of fun. Yeah, um, I'm really looking forward to it. It's really grown on me, like the, the, the combat, which I didn't think I would like. And like, the devs are so passionate. And yeah. Uh, gauntlet, like, so far, I. So here's the thing, like, I don't care for leaderboards or competitive activity. So for me, like, I'm just doing the gauntlet to get my seal of the worthy, and after that, don't really care. Uh, so on my Barbarian, I got it on the first try. On my Necro, I'm going to be going on to my third try now. So it's interesting to be doing something that's kind of different than just, like, you know, Nightmare Dungeon going to just go through the dungeon, kill the boss, right? You're on a time limit, you're... Different things are important. I gotta go open the window because it's getting too hot in here. Plans are great till you get hit in the face for the first time. There you go. What's the leading solo necro uh, current build? Let's take a look, see. Unable to view a private profile. Oh, okay. Unable to view a private profile. What is this build? What is this build? So it's Bone Spear with Army of the Dead and Bone Prison. Okay. That was on... Was that Ruse? No. Everyone is setting their profiles to private. What a load of garbage. Oh my god, what's the point of this? <laughs> uh, well that's... weird. Oh, the grandfather, nice. Okay, so Bone Spear with Bone Prison. So it seems like it's still Bone Spear, but not the exact Bone Spear that I'm running, apparently. Okay, this was... who? Career Flyer. So Laxy, let's see. Um, yeah, it seems to be Bone Spear for the most part. Black Sea. Arc. Chaser. Yeah, Bone Spear with Bone Prison, looks like. The bosses can be very helpful based on the pillars they spawn on kill. 
I so I just thought that it would take me too long to kill the bosses, but okay. So we do get a murmuring cache every time, I guess, or just about. Ah, draw it on Photoshop and put it on a separate screen. I guess we can do that, but... I mean, at this point, I feel like I'm learning it pretty well. Um, so yeah, those two stack... Like, we get so much. So th these are two hotspots that are absolute must-hits. The question is, after that, the plan kind of falls apart. Uh, I should have saved my key for that locked chest. That's my bad. So th there's a guy over here that drops a key. Meaning he'll respawn and drop a key again. I need to make 17 more K. 17K more. Um, Maybe I should try to do a boss. I don't know. You think content creators and players just bash D4 because it's a thing to do? To some extent, yes. Uh, that is not to say that D4 does not deserve any criticism. It certainly does. But there definitely is, like, like there is no mistake. As a content creator, you get vastly more views and favor by bashing D4 than defending it. As for, like, players in general, like, yeah, you do... Hating on Game X, whatever Game X might be, does tend to be, like, a popular thing to do. Um... Again, not to say that... D4 is not deserving of any criticism. It absolutely is. The boss gives 12,000, uh, Chris Ben? 12,000. That is considerable. One or two bosses would be the difference there. I guess the question is, how long is it going to take? A DNA reference does hurt. Yep. Yep. The fact that you're using an S-tier build while I only have an A-tier build shows how bad you really were in your first run. True. <laughs> uh, Growmass saying, sad to hear people are missing out on your lore videos, zoomers, I guess, and Last Epoch lore is interesting at the very least. Incomplete, though, from what I understood from my first playthrough. Yeah, they have not finished the campaign. Gore Spiller, 34, 35 months. After the patch, D4 good or D4 bad? If you were in the D4 bad camp, this patch does not change things for you. The first opportunity for D4 to not be bad, if you thought D4 was bad, is going to be Season 4. Playing a party of two, seeing inconsistent leaderboard results for both. This is it just us? Is anyone else having that issue? I haven't done two-man leaderboards yet, but uh, we'll try soon. In general, there seems to be some quirks with the updating of the leaderboards. Seems to take some time as a delay. Dylan, that rock in the one-year badge now. So are all the top spots taken by people who have all uber uniques? Um, no. No. So there's going to be a new gauntlet map every week. But for now, like every week, it is always the one same map so that you can be rerunning it over and over. That's the idea. Landry's saying, you're a planner. You make plans. If a plan fails, you make another one. You also play a musical instrument of your choice. Ah, okay. Goose, 47 month reset. Hope you're doing well, Goose. Hope people are liking this activity, saying Gromass. I get the impression that... Um, well, I guess we'll see. I'm, I'm not going to pre-bias things. Tried up on my trash. Hoda Barb. Uh, Charge Barb got 267 on the second try, and I'm done. Not for me. Yeah, that's reasonable. I'm not mad. I'm just sad that this game didn't hit with hit uh, with me the same way the other three did. 
Can't say for sure why, but I just can't settle on this one. Yeah, it's reasonable. It's reasonable. Godric saying, I noticed a kid named Riker on the opposing team that my kid played recently. Hard to say if his parents watch you or not. So I noticed some years ago, Googling Riker started to turn up a different result of some guy named Riker Powell. Who seemed to have been, if I did the math right, conceived around 99 or circa the year 2000, basically. So this would have been after I started using the name in Unreal Tournament. So my theory is that the father probably played me in Unreal Tournament at some point and just like liked the name and then convinced his wife that he didn't get it from a video game. That's my running theory. Because otherwise it's just coincidentally at the same time he happened to spell, come up with his name and spell it exactly how I did when there were zero search results for that on the internet at the time. Have a good one, Mark Galina. Take care. Do you think we will see the same people at the top of the leaderboards every week? Yes. Also, uh, for the most part, yeah. Some people will like just do it maybe at the start of a season. And you'll see the same names, probably. And then for the rest of the season, it's going to be the same names every week, probably. Playing Last Epoch lately and loving the Rune Master. Nice, nice. The kid was 17, 18. Might be actually a bit too young in that case. What is DPM, Baka? Should I call the full name of some random boot on the internet? Yes, because if you Google Riker, you're going to find him anyway. So it doesn't really make a difference. Like, it's it's a public information. Any interested party would have taken all the rest of the info that I said and been able to find him in a five-second Google search. Cheddar, I'm doing well. How are you? A couple of years ago, when I first discovered your YouTube channel, I thought uh, you have three Ks in your name. I was worried, but then I realized you're a cool guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, it's a one K off from uh, who, who, who. Blizzard doesn't uh, write the ship with season four and the expansion flops. Do you think they will abandon the game? Yes. That said, so flopping, let's let's clarify what we mean here. The sent the public sentiment of D4 can remain consistently D4 bad, and that not affect Blizzard's decision. What's gonna affect the decision is how much money it's making on a seasonal basis. So as loud as people can be about hating on the game, at the end of the day. If on their back end, their numbers are good, then things can get even worse and they will keep supporting the game. If, however, it flops in the sense that it is commercially no longer viable to continue supporting the game uh, because everyone is hating on it and no one is spending money on it, then I do believe they would abandon it, yes. But as long as people are spending money, uh, enough money, if enough people are spending enough money, then they will continue to support it, in my opinion. Uh, okay, so I gotta make another 17k here. I ideally don't want to have to optimize my build. <laughs> you got 12k for fighting the first boss. So theoretically, I guess I can try to kite a boss in and kill him alongside other stuff, but gosh. So I need to keep hitting these two. Um, I need to get this chest instead of this chest. So I gotta remember, I, I, I ought to be able to get both chests, in fact. Right? I go, I kill this guy once, and then I kill him twice, and I have two keys there. 
then I can hit up both chests. But I need a better optimized path here, so I think... I think this is what I'm gonna do. Original plan, go all the way around here. Um, shit. Come around here. Because I, I don't have time to do everything is, is the issue. We come here. I hit this. I come up here. I get that guy. I hit the... Uh, do I hit the other proving yet, though? Okay, I come up here, I get that, I come back down, I hit the pillar of proving, I get the key again, no, I don't get the key again, I come around, see, because this is sort of a dead zone, right, in, in density, I gotta remember where the dead zones are. <sighs> like, these are really the only two significant things here, is the issue. But then there's nothing else, anywhere else. And I'm not fast enough to do this whole loop. Like, I just, I can't go down here. Mind you. I think I just gotta kill more of the big guys. Not sure how they came to the decision to make Gauntlet's seasonal only content. Do you have any thoughts? I'm surprised by that as well. Yeah, I'm not sure why. I don't know. Have I spent money on the game other than the original purchase? I have, yes. I'd like to see this game improve. I still plan on getting this when I get a new PC. I mean, it's also coming to Game Pass, like, soon? End of March? It's like one of those games where you don't want to double up on a line or cross over the line. Yeah. I'm trying to... Think, like, what is the optimal? Because, like, I don't have time to do this loop a, a million times, right? But I also want to get the most out of each of the two score chests. So I do like the strategy of coming here... Popping the glory, killing these things. Maybe I go up the yeah. So I'm gonna kill those things and go up there, I'm gonna kill that. Then actually what I could do. I can come here. Oh. Kill my way over here. Then pop the respawn. And then oh, you know what? I can do this loop back and forth. I can do this loop back and forth. Yeah, okay, so we come up here, we go here, pop the glory, kill our way all the way here without popping the respawn. Then I pop this respawn here, and maybe by then my glory has run out, so then I rerun this back to here, and then I can pop the respawn and then rerun this back up here. This way I get three keys by just doing this back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. Yeah. I think that's the play. And then I continue up here. And then I get this. I pop this. And then I come back here to get these two high density zones again. And then I can come here. Then I can loop here. Kill this. And then loop back. I think that's the play. I think that's the play. Cap. Captwit9, five month resub. Hope you're doing well. Okay, I think we're gonna try that. <laughs> oh gosh. We'll see. Uh so Gauntlet is permanently in the game. It's not just for season three. That's why I'm also confused why it's only in it, it's not available for Eternal Realm. Maybe once season ends it'll become available for Eternal. I don't know.
Regarding seasonal only gauntlets, isn't the most new content after launch originally launched in season and then put into eternal? Uh, my thoughts are this is the PTR for this and they will learn and tweak for future seasons and eternal. Uh, isn't most new content after launch originally launched in season and then put into eternal? So that has not been the case. I ideally, that ought to be the case, but we have yet to see something launched in season added to eternal outside of some legendary aspects that are made out of seasonal powers. But that said, I agree with the overall sentiment that maybe they're just tweaking things for season three and then it'll be added into Eternal in the future. Have a go on Fishing Works. Okay, so again, plan. We go here, we go here, we go here. We go up here, respawn back down here, respawn back up here. And actually, I can hit this chest because I'm getting three keys. So I can hit that chest back up there, go over here, uh, get that chest, respawn here, 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 hit this. And then if I have time, I guess back over there. Okay, let's do this. Best laid plans of mice and men. Already pushing the wrong buttons like I'm playing Last Epoch. So again, this is a character that I basically haven't touched since the start of the season. So it's level 100, but like it's not properly geared. It's probably like using old meta stuff. Oh my god, what is blocking me? This is it. The whole run is a mulligan. Whole run is a mulligan. Okay, now I gotta not touch anything until I hit the altar. Promise of glory. Here we go. All right. And then, where did the respawn altar go? What? Where's the respawn altar? Oh, okay, it's in the corner. It's, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. Stop panicking. Stop panicking, Riker. Okay. We're gonna come up here. How's our glory doing? We're still glorious. Get the key. Why is the key taking so long to get this time? Okay, iron key get. You know what? He's pretty low. Uh, okay, we're gonna get the blast wave shrine. So now our pillar of glory is... Yeah. Alright, we're gonna kill all these things. Then we're gonna respawn them all. Okay, respawning happening. Okay, this is going better. It's once we get all of this big stuff, though, that things are going to be a little trickier. Okay. Keyman, respond. We got to get in close because he's a dampening. Got the iron key again. See, this time he killed him so much faster. Okay. I'm going to go and get these guys. Get the block chest. That is a pathetic amount of score. Okay, we're going to respawn. 
Let me do this loop again. Okay, so far so good. We're making good time, but again, it's what happens when we're out of this loop that things are gonna get tight. Technically, I don't need to kill the Keymaster again, but might as well do it just for the score. The monsters didn't respawn here. Or at least there's not as much density as I thought there would be. I guess those are the monsters that specifically spawned. Shoot, we're not gonna make it. Oh no. My plan was contingent on that being a lot of density. That was not a lot of density. How much do we get for this chest? Jeez, it's so little. Oh, we didn't pick it up, I guess. Okay, actually, that was a lot. That was better. Still, though, we gotta make 50k in three minutes. That's not going well. Shoot. Okay, I'm gonna stick to the plan that I thought through this time, but I don't see me making 50k off of this. Oh, man. Nope. This is going to be my worst run yet, actually. I thought the, mo I thought the density would respawn here. There's just nothing. Like... I guess the density that came, came specifically from popping those altars. Shoot. Yeah, no, I'm just screwed. I got the key again, but it doesn't matter. No, nah, we're just screwed. No chance. Well, rip. Rip. I guess these are good monsters. This is a good spawn. I don't know why it chooses to like respawn some things but not other things. That's confusing. I guess going here is a good idea. If I pop it, is it going to respawn all these guys I just spawned? Apparently not. did even worse this time. So backtracking is not really worth it, it feels. Uh, okay. Well, that's disappointing. My lid list is not a 25. I have shit gear. Like, this is a character that I played for, like, one week, maybe, at the start of season. This is not an optimized character. Hardcore, 
player 316. You're too kind, buddy. I appreciate you. How you doing, Joseph? Uh, my score goal is 175 in order to... Um, In order to hit the seal of the worthy. Have a go on fishing works. R. Medjil saying, how do you think this, the casual player, the casual gamers will video the test servers? They will no longer have the newest thing on the official live servers. Also big bugs not fixed as fast on the test servers. How do you think the casual gamers will, I guess, view the test servers? They will no longer have the newest thing on the official live servers. Um, so there is a downside to doing PTR, but I feel that the upsides at this point and this state of the game vastly outweigh the downsides. Yes, it's true that people will be able to go onto PTR and experience that new freshness, but we've been doing that in D3 forever and it has not seemed to significantly negatively impact the game. Whereas what has been significantly negatively impacting D4 is launching a season and everyone is griping and shitting on it in the forums and everywhere. Once we get to a state where we can launch seasons and everything is good and everyone is happy, then remove PTR. <laughs> Miles. Chris saying, trying to find a positive streamer on this. How are we liking it? Um, so I don't love it, but it's not really content for me. I don't really care about leaderboards. Um, but I like that it's something different. I like that there's different objectives. Um, I'm trying, I guess like I'm... On my first run, right? Like, on my OP Barbarian, I just blew through it in one go and automatically got the Seal of the Worthy. Now I'm doing it on... A deliberately like undertuned character to see how much I really need to plan and strategize and how much planning and strategy will impact my performance and um, the preliminary results are uh, I am being penalized for thinking <laughs> uh, my two my runs in which I have carefully planned out my strategy have not really gone substantially better than the run in which I just YOLO'd it so um, maybe I'm just a giant moron or I need to better understand exactly what's going on because now what I've learned is not the strategy that I had wasn't working because I thought it would respawn all the big density and it's not doing that. So this remains a really good path, a really, a really good run. Outside of that though, I don't know, I don't know where to go. It still feels like this locked chest was worth getting, but maybe at this point I should just YOLO it down to here and try to get those two locked chests. Maybe I abandoned this arm at that point. So I come up here. I can do... I hit this. I come here. I hit that. I go there. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do this time. So... We'll have three keys. I can open up one, two. So we're going to go up here. We come here. We hit this. We go over to there. We hit that. We go over to there. We hit that. No, shit. Okay, hold on. I don't hit the pillar of the proving, but I hit the pillar of glory. I come here. Um, I kill everything. Then I hit the pillar of glory. And I hit the Pillar of Proving. I come back up here. At which point I think it's no longer worth going back down. But then I have this Pillar of Proving and nothing to do with... Unless this is good density here, but I don't think so. I do think I have to come back. Because here there's a boss and I'm slow against the bosses. Good afternoon, Dimune. How you doing? Hey, cheers. Never born lucky. 
The seal of the worthy score seems to be 175k. Leandra is saying, in true D&D fashion, your back-to-back -back plans have failed. It is time to team up with Michelle Rodriguez, Sophia Lillis, and Justice Smith. No paladins. There you go. Yeah, so it's kind of like Challenge Rifts in D3, exactly. You gotta kill the bosses. It takes so long. So, you get like 10k or something out of a gold chest is the thing. You've been getting a bigger score going north. My I only did one run on the barb. I forgot what I got, but I got at least 200. I got over 200k. I'll, I'll have to kill bosses on the run to get the shrine bonuses and points. Right, the shrine. I keep forgetting about the shrine bonuses. Any way more mobility? I can't. That's the problem. I'm a necromancer. Have you dropped any of the new aspects from Season 2? Uh, no, but I've not been trying to farm them. I've just been in here and uh, nothing like items don't drop in here. Margulis is saying, so much better than challenge rifts. Use your own character. That makes all the difference. Necromancers are great if you want to raise a family. Raising a family they're not good for. <laughs> Fair. So let's say I can get about 20k from those. Okay, so like, my, if I remember correctly, my first run, I got like 150. And I, I just did this loop down here, basically. So if I can come here, and then I did do these over here, actually. So here we go up. A little of proving, or I can do it this way, I guess. Yeah, I can get the three keys. I'll get the three keys, then we can open up a bunch of things, I guess. So we come here, we go. Um, Pillar of Glory. Pillar of Glory, Pillar of Proving. Pillar of Proving, and then we'll come back down this way. And we're just going for the chests. Yeah, we'll try that. We'll see how that works. So we're going up this way. That's the problem is my, my butt is so slow. Okay, where is the Pillar of Glory? I gotta touch the Pillar of Glory. Got it. Alright, Glorious. Gotta get the most out of this. Gonna drop me the key. Uh, pillar of glory, go.
Yeah, it, like, it doesn't respawn all the monsters that I thought it would, is the part of the issue. Oh, I guess we can kite that guy over. Doing as well on time this time. Uh, kill the Scourge of the Lion this time. Very close. Come back here for the third key. Probably half time though. It's so fucked. So we're beelining for those chests, but we're, we're just, just hopeless. It's hopeless. We just got all the most, like, that we're going to get at this point. Now it's all slim pickings from here on out. I can hope to make it up in uh, keys, but I don't think that's going to happen. Like, not even at 100k. It's ridiculous. No chance. No chance. Rip. Uh, okay. How many fucking... One, two, three, four, five. Okay. We'll... Pop one of these, I guess. Some good density here. Should have dragged those into this guy. Uh, can I kite him over? Can you come this way, please? Can is the answer. All right. Yeah, you only get like 10k from that. Uh. No, nope, we're not making it. Still want to kill him.
this is why I did not want to kill the bosses, because it just it takes so long on this build. I'm gonna go grab that chest after, but like, I'm getting 12k from this, like it's not worth it. I guess, I keep forgetting, it's the shrine. You're also getting a shrine. I guess that's what makes it worth it. Oh, I don't even have any keys left. Lol. Um, okay. You know what? Because of the shrine, maybe. I mean, we're still 15k short, so like, we're still, well, 10k, I guess. Uh, I guess this is technically our best run yet. Right? We're 10k short. We're getting closer. Getting closer. So this patch for most of us is a thing we'll do once in a week and then F off until next week. Yeah, basically. Unless you care about leaderboards, yeah. What is the consensus on the event? I don't know. What is the consensus? What are people thinking? Rogue saying, I just got worthy on a Necro that isn't fully geared. I went southeast first, bought the two gold chests down there, then went north to the path you were taking. It was slow XP at first, but accelerated at the end. Yeah, it's when you get those two, um, it's, it's when you hit the glory nodes. Darkoza saying, I tried your left loop back strat, but continued till the reset pillar top left. Boss... Uh, kill gives shrine that you use to kill next boss after reset. Got 275 with similar necro to yours. Alright, so we gotta go for the bosses, I guess, is what we're saying here. It's, uh, I keep forgetting that they drop a shrine, and those shrines can be really significant. I would say right now, like, I'm pretty demoralized, if only because it feels as though I'm not doing much better coming up with a strategy than just, like, YOLOing it. Uh, Energizer just got a last epoch and wondered what class you think suits best for someone who loves to play Meteor Wizard in D3 and Blizzard Sorcerer in D4. I'm assuming Sorcerers, but are, there viable, are they viable in the endgame? So I, I am not intimately familiar with all of the the last Epoch endgame builds. I'm trying to think. Is there not a Meteor build in last Epoch? Um, let me see here. I think Rune Master might be a bit. Um, I mean, Rune Master is really nice, but it's a different style of gameplay that's going to be more active to do rune combos, which is really cool. It's really cool, but like if you're hoping for a specific something. Operation Otter is doing very well with his Sever build. Was in his stream just before. Very good pace. Nice. Nice. Okay, let's see. Um, Maybe Plasma Orb, Rune Master. Rune Master is like the best of the, in my opinion, the best of the mage classes. Maybe a Glacier Sorcerer you can go with. Huh? 
Obviously, unless my math is bad, you will need 176k for it. You had 16... Uh, 165,000, you needed 10,000 more. Okay, 176. That's an oddly specific number, but okay. I, I trust your math on that. I just find it interesting that that's the number they selected. Greetings from Italy. Ciao, come stai, Dev? Can you do Deckard's voice? Ah, hello. Lin John Gao saying, I'm sure you'll reach the 175,000 points while doing Deckard's voice. Hmm. Should I do a Barbarian or a Druid? Both are great. Both are great. Am I still playing in Shrouded? I haven't had a chance to recently uh, with the launch of Last Epoch, but I'm still interested in Shrouded. Morgulus is enjoying the gauntlet. Got worthy on Barb. Working on Druid. Not bad content. Not sure why it took so long to implement. Prophetic saying people need to understand Blizzard is adding to building the end game as they go through the seasonal updates. I understand why people are upset slash bashing the devs, but I feel with each season the game is getting more content and eventually there will be a lot of great stuff to do. Just gotta be patient and trust their process or play another game in the meantime. Yeah, that's fair. That is fair. Okay, so I'm wondering, new plan, uh, skip boss one, but then, this is a boss, right? Kill him multiple times, maybe? I'm assuming he respawns as well, right? I guess skip no bosses other than the first one, maybe. Gala resets every week. You got a new Gala every week, yeah. Dan Belcha, 51 month resub. Hope you're doing well. The boss is also re-sponsored res to the shrines. Okay, so yeah. At least this guy will kill multiple times. Um, I guess I can try to kill that guy. So maybe these are the three spots. With all the necro buffs this patch, would it be worth checking your build for adjustments? Uh, I really don't want to go farm new stuff. I have no interest in doing that on the necro right now. Uh, so I, I also though, like, I want to... So the point of the gauntlet, right, is that being smart and planning ought to be able to improve your outcome. So I don't want to just, quote, cheat and just get stronger and then the content's obsolete, right? Like my Barbarian, without thinking, I just crushed everything. Uh, so the reason I am not particularly enthused right now is I YOLO'd it on my first run with the Necro. I didn't get worthy. Cool. That means that now that I'm putting thought into it and strategizing and planning, I ought to do better. And I'm not really doing better. So, either I feel bad because I'm apparently stupid, um, or I feel bad because planning doesn't really reward you all that much. Or not substantially enough over just YOLOing it. That it's basically made that YOLOing it is almost as effective. Um, so I don't know which of the two it is currently, but either case, I feel bad. It could be that once I clue into what the proper strategies are for Gauntlet um, and what is a bad strategy for Gauntlet, then moving forward, things are going to be nice and smooth. So, 
So I guess what I am potentially learning is it is important to do the bosses, even if it takes long to do the bosses. Because they drop shrines. So we'll see how much of a difference this makes now, I guess. Buddha saying the shrines are important. You're getting higher score if you don't skip the bosses. Iron Valor, how you doing? If you look at the gauntlet, try to go left. So far for me, if I don't backtrack, I get the same score regardless of which way I go. Okay. Yeah. I guess I can... Okay, so... Here, I guess here's what we'll try. I'll go this way, I'll kill the boss. I'll come here. Um, I'm not gonna bother backtracking. I'm just gonna do this loop like this. Hit this chest. And do a full loop. And then we'll do it again, if we have time. We're probably not gonna have time. Okay, I'll we'll just do that. So we skip the first boss, but then we're not gonna skip the next ones. I suppose. What I will do is kite this boss. down. Oh, also killing him while I got a score multiplier ought to be good. Right? Okay. Spawn monsters. Uh, I'm gonna go poke him again. What shrine did I get? I don't know what shrine I got from that. Last wave? Oh, wow. Holy shit. That, like, insta-popped him. Okay, yeah, the shrines are incredible. Holy crap, okay. I severely undervalued the shrines. Okay, but that basically means that... Well, not necessarily. Okay. I guess if you're on a faster build, maybe ignoring the bosses is a viable strategy, but not on a slow-ass build. Okay, I'm feeling more optimistic. Hopefully this is not misplaced optimism. This is our best start yet. Let's 
trying to poke. What's interesting is that the... What you get from these does not follow you. Poke him. We're gonna take him down, then we're gonna respawn him, and hopefully use whatever we get. This is a drop. Taking long though. It's taking so long. Oh my god. It's the other boss was easier to kill. This guy's taking forever. Too long. It's too long. It's just killed my whole run. It's just killed my whole run. On the clock, no chance. Actually, if, my God, that shrine is insane! Holy shit, though. Go, 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 go! Come on, get the other guy. Okay, those shrines are freaking ridiculous. Holy crap! Slow trying to a slow trying. There's another guy like around this bend, maybe. Have time for another full on boss fight, though. Oh, we're gonna be so close. We're not gonna make it. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I gotta go. I gotta get the this pack up here. No, it's not this pack. It's these guys. These guys will do it. Okay, I think, I think we just made it. I think with that we just made it. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Oh, thank God we don't have to do this again. Now we on to go on to two-player. We got our Seal of the Worthy on our Necro. Okay, so yeah. It's that the shrines are so ridiculously strong. Wow. Like, it takes me forever to kill one boss. But then I respawn him with the shrine effect, and I kill him in, like, three seconds. It's insane. Okay. Go for the vampire bosses north for his shrine, the speedy archer buff. Oh, our artillery shrine, yeah.
Yeah, the bosses also keep dropping the same shrine. True, with all the necro buffs this patch. Right, okay, so... Patch notes say corpse explosion plus 21.5% buff, but it still shows the same 220 damage like before the patch. Blight did increase from 450 to 72. Uh, let's wonder if it's just a display bug. Why have my damage numbers dropped from like 10 million to 1 to 2 million since the new patch? Penetrating shot rogue. Uh, good question, Tommy Flop. Is there any interaction or item that changed in the patch notes that you might be using? Or does anyone have any idea why that might have been the case? When you're killing the boss only, it wasn't getting vulnerable. Aren't you missing the vulnerable stone on the pet? Uh, I don't know. I haven't touched this character since, like, week one of season three. <laughs> what rewards do you acquire for completing the gauntlet? Uh, let's take a look. So, there are different tiers to reach. The highest tier is worthy. If you get worthy, you get the maximum reward. Um, well, first off, just every time you run the gauntlet, I think. No, that's not true. Uh, well, maybe you got a couple items. I don't know. But, hold on. Are those 925s? Nope, not even. So, yeah. It's these that you get once a week. So, it's similar to the challenge rifts in D3. Right? You run the challenge rift once a week. You get your rewards. The difference is there are four tiers of reward. If you get the highest tier, you get all four rewards. Okay, I'm going to go back into my Barbarian now. This one's done. And now we'll try a two-man. Falconer Super Cool. Yeah, so you don't get the cash until the end of the week is my understanding. I don't really know why that is, but that seems to be the case. Uh, apparently there's a bug with crossbow. Or there was a bug with crossbow that got fixed. Oh, yeah, okay, so there were some fixes to bugs with the rogue. Maybe that's why you're dealing less damage. Okay, who's up for doing some twos? Come back if you Let's see what the current... Twos... How do I even view the leaderboards here? It won't show me the... What? Why can't I see... That's weird. What is happening? Something weird's going on with the leaderboards. It's not like displaying correctly or something. Well, it's my summer. No, no, never mind. Okay, that's my bad. Nothing weird is happening. Look at Zaraph here. Dang. So the highest two score, nice, is now 816,000. That makes more sense. But Solo Sork still beating with 937. Amazing. Amazing. 946. 946. Four man still hasn't broken 1 million. Interesting. Interesting.
Okay, I'm gonna go fill up on some water and I will be right back. BRB.
And we're back. Alrighty. Happy Tuesday, Grumpy Stew. God, the seal of the iron willed. Is that good? It's good, but you can do better if you want. Get the seal of the worthy. That is the best seal that you can get. Uh, yeah, so does anyone want to pair up for duo leaderboard? We'll see what score we can get in twos, and then in threes, and then in fours. Because I'm pretty sure you can get these caches for each of the four leaderboards, or five, technically. Unless it's just solo and party. It might also be that. Or actually, wait. Yeah, Solo Barbarian Ladder. I'm assuming... Um, Party Ladder might all get grouped into one. Hmm. How many more points do I need for the Worthy? I don't know where you were, but you need 176 for the Worthy this week. I don't know if it's always going to be that. But at least for the time being, 176. So, yeah, I got, I got, I got one. I got two fifty four, and it was basically on my my first go there. Interesting that. I mean, Zeros not on my friends list, is he? Oh, there's. No. Who be this? Look at him with his grandfather and his shako and his fancy MTX. Look at all fancy. Do you get cosmetics for the Seal of the Worthy? No. You get in-game, um, you get items, basically. Loot. Well, in the meantime, I'm going to do another run on my Barbie here. Oh, the map is once again undiscovered for me. Interesting. Huh. I guess it resets when you exit game. That's noteworthy. Okay, so I'm gonna start by bonking him. Get my because this guy like this build shreds bosses. Enemy horde incoming. Not really. Bonked. So I'm going to try to apply some of the same tactics that I just had. I keep saying enemy horde incoming, and yet. Score multiplier. Let's go. Night and day difference, right? On this character to the other character. Key again. Oh, 
What was the score that I had again? 250... 250? 254, I think. The time to kill difference is just absurd. thing is I don't even need on this character the the shrines ironically enough We'll go back for this guy, though. So I think I'm on track to beat my previous score. And I can see, like, in a team, splitting up to uh, cover different parts of the map. boss while we still have the shrine effect. Yeah, I'm gonna beat my previous score at least. Yeah, we just beat our previous score with three minutes left. You know, I might as well go back for this guy. Let's grab those gold chests. I'm gonna hit 300k. left. There's a boss just to the north of me right now. Okay, the thing with the chest, they don't auto-pick up. That's something to be aware of. Should be the boss here. Yeah, Blood Bishop. Ooh, 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 don't die. Come on, big bonk, big bonk. We don't really have much left to kill at this point.
But we've got about 100,000 more than our last score we're going to end with. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, now we're backtracking, unfortunately. So we're not going to find any monsters anymore. Uh, but yeah, we, uh, we about doubled our score. Technically... I don't remember if I've been through here again. I think I did. Yeah. Alright. Oh, well, that was a good run. Yeah, we went there. Come on, some monster. Get one more monster. There. Ah, came so close to 350. 349. 349 is pretty good. It's okay. You have ranked up. Wait, what? How have I ranked up? I already had Seal of the Worthy. What? Yeah, Rob. Nice. You got him. 723. Amazing. How to get the cosmetics they mentioned. So the only cosmetic to get is the special show-off cosmetic. And you get that by ranking in the top 100, I believe. So you got to get into the top 100. Did I play No Rest for the Wicked beyond the small portion everyone was reporting? Uh, I did not, no. But it's looking really promising. It says ranked up every time, not the best wording. Okay. <laughs> Cheers, Rogue Leader. What's PB? What's PB? What is... Oh, what's my personal best? Uh, I haven't been trying. 349, it's my second run. Uh, current rank, probably not even on the top thousand anymore at this rate. Uh, yeah, bump down to 1,200. Can you show outfits in the item shop? Sure. Flaming feathers. Well, it's not an outfit. Uh, this sort of BDSM ninja predator. I see. Peacock. Fancy face. Creepy doll. Annabelle. This is your crusader, folks. Actually, it's a void knight from uh, last epoch. Um, elf. Let's call it an elf. Gems. More gems. Ooh, look at him showing off his legs. Sexy. Uh, this is like a reskin of another cosmetic from season one. <laughs> Angelic Birdman face. Tree face Woodman. Bird! Like Dr. Bird. That's actually kind of cool. The Raven Cantor. We all have different items in our shop because it's like like every day the shop resets, it cycles through different items. Uh, they say the reason for that is they don't want to like have everything in the shop at the same time and overwhelm you with choice. Cynical people say that it's because of FOMO, but like these things rotate back in pretty frequently, so I don't know. It does seem like, yeah, why not just give us the option to like view everything? Like maybe just show us things there, but let us view everything? I don't know. Anyway. Um, shinies. 
flowers. Interesting. Yokai. Or an Oni, rather. Sorry. Oni mask. Hail Caesar. A bird! Birds aren't real, man. Hydra. Bird. Flame. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's up, Gerard? Yeah, we've been playing a lot of Last Epoch. Having a good time. I'm sure. Petco saying, I did 340k with Arc Lash Sorcerer, but I feel I don't know the map and lose a lot of time in running. The first places are people with 800,000, and I wonder how they do it on day one. So, I mean, part of it is, like, a lot of these guys have crazy optimized builds of, like, uber uniques and stuff. So they're just doing more damage than you, so they're killing stuff pretty much instantly. So anything that's saving time there is going to blitz them through. Outside of that, I mean, they have probably, you know, better strategies, but... Salut Pierre Mignot, ça va bien? Uh, as far as I'm aware, there's no way to see the leaderboard outside of in-game. Uh, yes and no, Conan. I'll be making videos and guides for Notice for the Wicked when it releases into early access. I have interest in doing so. I have interest in doing so. So as long as there's an audience for it, then I would be happy to. I'm actually a little bummed that um, my video on Wicked did not get more views. I expected it to do better. What is my opinion on leaderboards, but having private profiles? In my opinion, leaderboards, you want to see what is doing well. Um, I feel like it's sort of silly to have the ability to... Okay, th this is the part that I find silly. Like, it's either let us inspect the profiles or don't let us inspect the profiles giving people the choice to hide their profiles just makes it annoying. Because now it's like, I go here, and I don't know if I can have the same experience right now, but... View profile. Okay, that one's fine, but let's do... What was it? Sorcerer. Sorcerer, right? I go here, I do view profile. Unable to view. View profile. Okay, that one works. View profile. Unable to view. Like, it's just tedious to like go through and see which ones are not set to private so like i would almost I, I at this point i would almost rather not be able to inspect any profile than because once people catch on right all the top people in general what happens is well i don't want people to see my strategy so that i maintain my top spot if you're a streamer like rob or just a you know a cool dude you're not going to set your profile to private but like any player who uh, is not streaming and wants to be competitive, like, what is your motivation to not setting your profile to private? You're just giving people opportunity to copy you and beat you, right? So it's in your best interest to maintain your spot on the leaderboard to set your profile to private. Like, it's that's literally the strategy. The strategy ought to be, if you're doing well, set your profile to private. Because there's actual stakes, right? If you make the top 100, yada, yada, yada. Like, personally, I like being able to see what the top leaderboard people are doing. I say this as someone who is never going to compete. I don't care at all about cracking top 100. Like, I'm never going to try to do this. But I still like to see what people are doing. But I totally understand why they would not want us to see what they're doing. Plug a video in chat? Sure. 
Um, let me... Actually, we might have it if we do this command. Does that still work? Yeah, there you go. Boom. Now let's just set up that command. If they would at least mark private profiles, so we don't have to click them to begin with. Yeah, true, Butcher. True. Because this is already day one, and like half of the top guys are set to private. So as more days elapse, just people are going to realize, oh, well, other people are doing this. I'm going to set my profile to private. Spanish thing, I remember when those at the top of the leaderboard in D3 would strip off all their armor after the runs because Blizzard hadn't yet snapshot of their runs. Good memory, Fred. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Rod will say you should be happy that we gave you the leaderboard you begged so desperately for. <laughs> I miss, I legit miss Rod. Like, he doesn't come on the campfire chats anymore. Fishing with Cav. Hey, I appreciate ya. We'll see Rogue and Necro. Should I level up a Rogue first or just roll the Barb? Barbarian is really strong right now. Really strong. I would say dive into Barb right now. Before they nerf Barb. I don't know if they're ever going to nerf Barb, but Barb is really strong right now. I'm having a blast on my Barb. Josh Wentz saying, is no rest for the wicked even an ARPG? It looks cool, but it doesn't seem to have any characteristics of the genre aside from a pulled back camera. So this is a very fair question. And my first, the first time I played wicked years ago and they showed me like the, the preview build, um, there was no items yet. It was just the combat. And like my first impression was, well, this feels more like Dark Souls. This doesn't feel like an ARPG. Um... The reason I call it an ARPG is because the devs call it an ARPG and they explicitly set out to make an ARPG. I guess talking to them more and understanding where they're coming from um, enabled me to better understand and accept calling it an ARPG. Now, is it a Diablo-like game? No. Is it comparable to D4, D3, PoE, Last Epoch? No. But these guys loved Diablo 2. They adored Diablo 2, they uh, adored Diablo 1, uh, D2, and when D3 came out, they are like, mm, this is not what we wanted, right? And a lot of people felt that way. A lot of D2 players were like, mm, no, D3 isn't it, man. Uh, D3 found its own audience, but for a lot of people, they did not like the jump from D2 to D3. And so... These guys are like, we're going to make our own D3. We're going to make our own... We're going to do our own take on the ARPG. And another thing that they felt is that the genre has sort of stagnated with regards to the overall formula. Um, there's an analogy. It, it might be in my upcoming interview video. But, like, I, I love the analogy that that he makes where it's like so what we've been seeing in the ARPG right now is people have been coming out with a faster horse right we get a faster horse and a faster horse and a faster horse right they're breeding faster horses and they're coming out with a car so just like when the car first came out it was met with resistance, right? I don't know if you guys are aware, but like when cars came out, it wasn't like, oh, this is amazing. Everyone loves this. Horses are shit. There was a lot of resistance. They're like, cars, this is terrible. This is never going to replace the horse. This is just a novelty. This is its own thing, whatever. Um, but, you know, horses weren't replaced. Horses have their own, their own use. But... It's just to say that when you are attempting to truly evolve something, it's going to look different, and you might not like it at first, and maybe you'll never like it. Maybe you'll always prefer the horse, and there's nothing wrong with that. But true visionaries need to make massive changes to what exists. In the same way that the ARPG genre was born from 
making the massive leap of taking a turn-based game and remove like because for those who don't know diablo one was going to be a turn-based game and in like the 11th hour they're like you know what take just just change it so that now all the actions happen at the same time as opposed to in turn and that's what that was the evolution that was the leap needed to make the rpg now you can argue that this evolution turns it into something that's no longer an rpg and that's fair but what the devs intent basically is is to make what they hoped the rpg would evolve into next whether that is truly an rpg or not ultimately isn't super relevant or important to me it's not a diablo like game it's not a poe like game it's not a last epoch like game uh it's its own thing it's also not exactly a dark souls game because it does ARP like the combat feels dark souls yes but itemization feels more arpg than dark souls the heart of arpg is randomized loot with randomized affixes and that's not dark souls right Correct me if I'm wrong, Dark Souls type games mostly focus on fixed loot in fixed places. You know, I need to go to this place here to get this ring that is in this hidden chest that always spawns in this playthrough. I know that this boss is always going to be there and, and, and this and that. Whereas this is ARPGs are more about the randomized loot and, and, and the whole loot game and finding nice builds, right? It's coming up with builds. I mean, I guess technically in Dark Souls as well, you come up with a build, but like... Your items play more into your build in an RPG. Grubby's too suggesting to just hide or scramble the name. I don't think people set it to private because they don't want to be identified. They don't they set it to private because they don't want people stealing their build. <laughs> Legion saying, I feel like ARPG people are going to bitch and complain about No Rest, but it's a game I 100,000% want to play and uh, I want it to exist and I'm sad it's going to struggle because of purists. Yeah, so I, I, I think what Wicked is delivering on is the promise that Diablo 4 failed to. Diablo 4 promised slower, more methodical combat where you're fighting fewer enemies at a time and the combat's more meaningful and... There were people that were excited about that, right? There were, like, more Diablo 2 style people, like, wanted the game to be slowed down. The issue is, when you're still operating with the same combat system of the ERPG, which is just click on enemy, mash buttons, um, get out of danger circle. Like, they gave us a dodge, which is nice, but it wasn't enough to make the core gameplay engaging and exciting enough to make a slower pace of that feel good. Whereas a game like Dark Souls, a game like Wicked, where you have full control of your character, you have specific moveset, every weapon has its own attack animations. It's not about avoiding circles, it's actual like the 3D model of the enemy's arm is a, a full collider. If you manage to avoid that arm, you're not taking damage. It's not just some damage radius or damage zone. It's literally what you see is what you get. Uh, you dodge at the right time. You parry. You block. They're giving us much more complexity to the combat such that, well, now if combat is slow, it's not boring. Because w w if you slow down a Diablo-like game's combat, it just becomes boring because there's nothing to it. You just click, 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 click until the enemy's dead. Whereas in a game like Wicked or Dark Souls, the combat is so much more meaningful. Every moment matters, every dodge, every swing, every parry. And you're rewarded for good uh, timing and good decisions and good instincts. And you're penalized for just button mashing. But when the combat and the core gameplay is, is basically just button mashing, then yeah... The only way to make that more interesting is throw more shit on screen so that there's more things dying faster so that items are dropping faster so that we're like like you're effectively just skipping combat like the entire end game of an arpg of a modern arpg is just skipping combat let's make the combat over as fast as possible because it's the most boring part of the game that's basically what it comes down to <laughs> all i want is my items so just let me put, put press a button and items drop is what you can distill endgame ARPG combat to. <laughs> Push button and items drop. So 
they don't like that. They they want it to take a step back and go towards well, no, let's like make the combat actually feel good and feel meaningful. Nemesis saying, IRL quote, if if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Now, just to clarify, I also enjoy mindless fun explosions on screen. Obviously, I play these games. I wouldn't be playing these games if I didn't enjoy that. Uh, so I don't think that something like Wicked is going to make these kinds of games not exist anymore. Uh, but I do think it has its own place, and it's it's never really kind of become a thing. And so I do hope that it can become a thing. Because there are aspects of, of like, Dark Souls and stuff that I do like, but it's lacking some of the things for me that, like, ARPGs have that prevent me from really diving into it. So if we could have this sort of marriage between the two, and again, for those who are unaware, the original Diablo 4 was going to be a Souls-like game. The original Diablo 4, Project uh, Hades, not Fen Fenris is this in incarnation. The original Diablo 4, codenamed Hades, being worked on by Josh Mascara, who saved Diablo 3 with Reaper of Souls. He was working on an over-the-shoulder, third-person souls-like game it wouldn't have been as challenging as a dark souls but it would have been that style of combat and they ended up scrapping that and saying nope just make a traditional arpg days will say i'm eager to see how no rest for the wicked ends up looks unique and i always wanted a more skill-based arpg rather than button mashy dark souls one got the right thing with methodical and more strategic combat kind of like the ubisoft game forgot the name for honor or something like that for honor sounds right gauntlet is not available in eternal realm for whatever reason Pneumatic, how you doing? What is your take on adding a local LAN to Last Ebot for people who want to play with their significant others, but their internet sucks? I'm all in favor of I am all in favor of local LAN for sure. Um, in particular, well, be, because you have an offline mode, LAN should be for offline characters. I'm fully in favor of that. How you doing, party sand? Gromas saying, ARPG doesn't mean Diablo-like, and people don't get that. Souls-like are also ARPG, but that's why we use terms like Diablo-like or Souls-like to get uh, specific. Although Wicked seems to be Diablo crossed with Souls, so get wrecked, people. Yeah, so, like, sometimes... I... Okay. It is true that... Okay. RPGs are games that are more like narrative. Very slow. Uh, you know, uh, an RPG is Skyrim. An RPG is, uh, you know, Fallout, right? These are RPGs. They're RPGs because... It's a game where you have a character, you're immersed in a world, there's story, right? ARPGs is basically, okay, you take the ARPG, but you're focusing on action. So you're downplaying all these other elements, and you're focusing on the action part. So a, a Diablo-like game is an action RPG because basically all you're, all you're doing is fighting monsters. It's pretty much all you're doing is the action. There is a story, right? It's happening, but it's not like... It's secondary to the action. Like, people don't play Skyrim for the primary reason of killing monsters. The, the, killing enemies is a large part of what you do, but it's not like 
that's the reason I'm playing Skyrim. Because I love going around killing monsters. Like, it's the whole experience to it. So there are some games like Darksiders. Darksiders is another action RPG. It's It feels more traditional RPG. It's not a Diablo like, but it's technically an action RPG. And every so often, games come out and they are action RPGs and they're in no way like Diablo, but it's that they're kind of like, they're action e games with RPG, a heavy like character building RPG mechanic. And so it's like, well, what do you call it other than an ARPG? Because you can have a game like that that's not a Souls-like, right? And I've, I've struggled with this in the past because to me, like, ARPG was always like, well, it's a Diablo-like game. But, like, technically, like, what else do you call these other games that are RPGs that are basically just action games? Uh, <laughs> but do have, like, your, you have skill points and everything. That's why I've started to say, like, when I... I still say ARPG overall, but like I'll, I'll often like focus on, on like Diablo like. Because some people will call them uh, dungeon crawlers, some people will call them hack and slash. I find it's just easier to say Diablo like. like When we mean Diablo like games, I think it's just easier to say Diablo like games, right? Because we say Souls like when we mean Dark Souls style games, so might as well just say Souls like. But Wicked is, is like um, um, a Souls blow. It's a Diablo and a Dark Souls together. It's a Souls Blow game. Now, Diablo-like game players, right? ARPG purists feel that Wicked is more of a Souls-like game. But I bet Souls-like players feel that it's more of a, of a Diablo-like game. One, the perspective, but two, like, itemization and, and all that stuff that we sort of take for granted that is in Wicked that you don't get in a Souls-like How you doing, Mo? Hope you've been well. Yeah, Final Fantasy VII is an RPG. Great point, uh, Wolfenstein. I tried some Helldivers too yesterday. Yeah, would uh, I'm getting into it. So, any interest in me streaming Helldivers too? <laughs> oh man. As the raid saying, this is an in-community definition. Games with combat like Skyrim or Assassin's Creed Odyssey are also labeled as ARPG on storefronts and by their players. Well, there you go. Yeah. Margrave saying, that's why there is a problem with D4 that make the only thing why we come to play something ultra slow. Yeah, uh, which is why the gameplay has been increasingly sped up since release. But yeah. Action games can be medium narrative experiences. Mike Mayo saying, I think EHG actually called Last Epoch Hack and Slash. I'm pretty sure I saw that somewhere. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to, to go with the Hack and Slash label. Or, or at least Hack and Slash ERPG. Let's put it that way. ERPG is more focused on systems and uh, game mechanics. Right, yeah. Fair. Chill Game Theorist saying, It'll be interesting to see how PUE2 compares to No Rest for the Wicked when it comes to combat. They both seem to have different takes on the same idea. Yeah. True. So, here's here's a question for you folks. Let's, let's go back in time to Diablo 2. Those of us who all fell in love with Diablo 2, what is it about Diablo 2 that is, like, the most memorable and that we liked the most? Like, if you think of some of your core D2 memories, what are some of the things that come to mind? Is it shitting your pants fighting Duriel? Is it... Or let's even go Diablo 1. Is it running into the Butcher that first time? Is it... Setting out into the Blood Moor on your first excursion? What are your core D2 memories? Are your core D2 memories spamming buttons and exploding screens of enemies? Is that like what you hold most fond of your memories of D2? Is it... When you got to a state of the game where everything was exploding instantly. Is that what you loved the most about the game? Was it mashing a couple buttons and hordes of enemies exploding at once?
How am I feeling about Last Epoch compared to D4? Last Epoch's a great game. It definitely does some stuff better than D4. Zathrax saying, Wilson is 80% off on Steam currently. Would you recommend it? Seems to be a mix of positive and negative reviews, plus claims of major bugs and crashes, dev abandonment, etc. At this point, I think it is abandoned. So the issue with Wilson on whether it's recommended or not is it depends on what the current patch cycle is. Wilson, at its core, when it's functioning right, is a good game. Is it amazing? Is it the best game? No, but it's a solid game that you can get a number of hours of enjoyment out of. However, every time they release a patch, they break the game and it becomes super buggy and it takes them a few months to fix things and then the game is in a good state again. So when I first had access to Wilson pre-release, I had a good build. Then they had their updated build on release where everything broke and everything wasn't working. And then it took them like three months and then they, they finally patched everything where everything was working again. And I had friends who picked it up on a summer sale and they're like, this game's great. Why does everyone hate this game? And it's because, well, you happen to get the game in a state where everything was fixed. Then they release another major patch and everything's broken again. And it takes them three months to fix everything. And they release another major patch and everything's broken again. And they got to fix everything again. So, like, to some degree, Wilson gets more hate than it deserves because it's not fundamentally a bad game. But if you cannot play it properly because everything is broken, then at that point, state it's a bad experience call them isometric ARPGs it's fair actually Darksiders are action adventure more akin to Tomb Raider and Zelda okay what about Darksiders 3 though Yeah, Konus, you guys did manage to sell me on Helldivers. Yeah, that's why I tried it. Is Diablo an ARPG or an ARPG, though? Mmm, good question. Best saying, for D2, it was getting set items. I was sure it was the pinnacle of what you can achieve in the game. That was a great feeling. Beating the game in a weekend LAN party? Nice. Daedal is saying it wasn't the game itself, it was that specific time in my life. That's an excellent point as well. Bale runs on a hammered in with TP chest or Giga Firewall Sword PvP. Nice, nice, nice. Zedly saying getting to Act 2 for the first time as a summoner necro and getting beat uh, the shit up by Duriel. Oh yeah. I think we all got beat the shit up by Duriel. What about Adventure of Van Helsing? I've heard good things. I, I might even own the game. I haven't had a chance to try it, though. Bear in the Woods saying, For Diablo 1, the music, the mystery, the feeling of exploring this dark, demonic world. Running into the Butcher the first time was insane to my adolescent brain. There you go. And no part of that was blitzing screens of monsters. Right? Mike Miata saying, For me, it's about the loot piñatas. The exciting, what did I get? Yep. Yep, yeah, loot piñatas, absolutely. Mardo saying, having no idea of my builds on my D2 Druid and getting wrecked by Nightmare Diablo. <laughs> yeah, hitting a wall and then being uh, quite challenging, right? Putting six perfect emeralds into a bow and smoking screens full of mobs. That satisfying uh, crafting reward. Wolf and Spine saying, best memories were builds, 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 and Duriel suddenly killing me so badly, so suddenly. Creating new characters and PvPing. So, like, PvP, right, has basically died out as a thing in ARPGs. Seems like D D2 was, like, peak ARPG PvP. And nothing really good has been done in that space since. Wicked will have PvP, by the way. Played D1, liked it. Years later, I picked up D2, and my only memory is, this sucks. Mm. What redacted made this stamina bar a thing. Oh, okay. Then played <laughs> D3 and liked it. 
went back to D2R when it released to give it another shot <laughs> and decided I was right the first time. Well, even Reed David Brevik wishes he can go back and remove the uh, stamina bar. <laughs> Cheers, curious. Yeah. Gromass saying, D2 for me was the immersive journey and progression of my character, plus my first multiplayer experience with uh, school friends through Hamachi. Ah, yeah. Feels strong, man. Also called Diablo-like hack and slash, too. Mystic saying, honestly, and this is going to sound basic for me, but D2 getting a group and doing bail runs. Yeah, that's totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. Gorse Miller just tried Gauntlet on Necro. Meh. Getting that first complete Zealer or Hammerden build and wiping enemies. But that's the point, right? It's getting to the point where you're now wiping enemies. What do you think of Gauntlet? I think it's good for long term, but not sure how I feel about it. Um, So it's not content for me. I think it's not content for most people. I'm not a competitive player, so it's hard for me to judge how well competitive players will like it. But, I mean, so far, they're they're blasting it. Like, Rob is blasting it. He's a, he's a hyper-competitive player. Uh, if it's something that I just got to do, like, once a week as a neat little activity to get my weekly reward, I'm cool with that. I'm happy with it being added to the game. Is it something that I'm going to keep doing just for fun over and over? No. Uh, but... It being in the game does not take away from the game, and it does add to the game. Spawn camping, randomly flagging hostile and hunting. Hashtag D2PVP. There you go. Yeah, all the D2 uh, PVP trolling. Sure. Blade saying, I'm a competitive player and I don't like the gauntlet at all. Do you want to expand on that? Thank you for chiming in, Blade. Do you want to expand on why you don't like it? Or what do you not like about it? Either way. Kagagate saying, D-Force problem, sorry for butchering your name, uh, is that your level 10 gameplay is the same as your end game. It's just nonsense. So that's something that I brought up, I think I brought up in my review of D4, right? Like, Here's my level 10 rogue. I'm using barrage. Here's my level 100 rogue. I'm using barrage. Um, you, yeah. Things don't feel substantially different, I guess. Uh, outside of just being stronger and like dealing more damage. Like, your build pretty much stays the same. Baron the Woods saying, I didn't get into D2 as much. The lore and world, and again, the music of D1 made me fall in love with the series. Rune words from D2 was awesome. Crafting a super weapon like, um, yeah, BOTD. Yeah, yeah, that big, those big crafting moments. Shoot. I, oh, it's fine. Okay. Mike Mayo saying, D2 is just amazing. I have real fond memories of it. Well, except for a screen full of lightning on hit scarab beetles. I died so many times of those. <laughs> Winter saying, playing D2 without internet and not looking up the meta for the class I was playing in playtesting classes. Now as an adult, I look up meta because I have less time to playtest builds. Yeah, all that exploration and trying out the builds, yeah. Why would your skills go away simply because you're higher level? Uh, so what we mean is, like in Diablo 2, for instance, what you're doing as a level 10 character is completely different from what you're doing as a level 100 or a level 90 character. You unlock better skills. It's not like at level 5 you unlock your best skill and that's the skill you're using for the rest of the experience. Okay, Tano saying, PUE2 says the same thing about slow combat. Do you think it will succeed there? 
So what's interesting is D4, PoE2, and Wicked are, or were, all moving towards slower, more methodical combat. D4 um, added a dodge. Because when your combat is more tactical, like adding a dodge allows you to have more tactical combat, right? Because otherwise, again, what what are you doing other than bashing buttons, clicking on enemies, and spamming your buttons? Well, a dodge now, you can be a bit more tactical, right? It's, it's one step forward. Um, PoE2 is taking two steps forward by making your dodge have no cooldown. So it's always available... It's kind of like a Dark Souls, right? Where you can always be rolling, rolling, rolling. Uh, but outside of that, uh, they've also sort of taken another kind of half step in that skills have a sort of built-in mobility to them where depending on the skill you use and how you use it, you might close, you might gap close a bit with using certain skills in PoE too. Um, so it... We see in multiple places developers seeming to believe that the path forward for the ARPG is slowing things down and making them more deliberate. And I, I think that's the key as well. So I should stop saying okay, slowing things down. Because that's not the the objective isn't to slow things down, and that's what Thomas Mahler explains with Wicked that it's not about slowing down the pace. It's just about making a more precise and methodical game, uh, and as a consequence of that, things need to go slower so that you could be making these micro decisions. Because if everything is so fast and you don't have the time to react, to parry, to to time out things, right, and you're just getting spamming buttons and things are exploding. Greg City, 97 months. Hope you're doing well, Greg. Coming up close on the 100, gang. We've got to get a, a 100 club. Coming up soon. Um, but yeah, so... PoE2 uh, is, is taking a bigger step than D4. D4 basically walked itself back almost immediately after launch. And uh, has been moving back towards D3 pace of game. PoE2 from the demos I played felt a lot slower paced and more Souls-like, but at endgame and with a well-geared character, how slow, how fast is it going to be? It's not clear. Um, my monitor is about to... I don't know how to stop my monitor from, like, timing out. It's like a button. It wants to go into power save mode, and I don't want it to go into power save mode. There we go. Automatic standby. Off. There. I figured it out. Okay, cool. But, yeah, the, the, the issue with D4 and PoE2 is that they're still, at their core, the same basic kind of... ARPG combat. So while they're kind of dipping their toes into this more methodical combat, Wicked is diving in head first. They're going all the way. So I think Wicked has a better chance of it being received well. That said, again, like to some degree, it's just about a matter of taste. There are people, and myself included, like, I do enjoy the blitzing through screens, blowing up screens of enemies. Um, is that what I always want to play? Like, does it mean that I would not like a slower-paced game? Doesn't mean I wouldn't like a slower-paced game, right? Like, I could like having chocolate, and I could also like having uh, a chicken breast. I do, maybe I don't always want chocolate, maybe I don't always want chicken breast, but I could enjoy both, right? Yeah, not saying one of my first C2 experiences was playing as summon skeletal necro and destroying content until hell bail one shot all skeletons on every attempt. I had no corpses to spawn skeletons. Gameplay over, all hope lost. Rage ensued. Yep. Yep, I know the feeling. Necro, summoner necro was my first character in D2. Uh, Var shows us saying the music and atmosphere of D2 along with a simplistic gameplay and massively complex loot system is what I love about it. However, I first tried D2 between the second D4 beta 
and D for release, and I have clocked in a lot of hours. Oh, wow. Interesting. Interesting. That's great to hear, Bear in the Woods. Yeah. Daedalus saying, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on why things in D2 we love, but in D4 we hate. Endless Bale runs versus Endless uh, Duriel runs in D4. Yeah, uh, well, if you can give me more examples of things, I can address that one. Uh, we didn't know better. It's as simple as that. <laughs> it's a different time, right? It's like saying, um, what's an example? Hmm. No examples coming to mind right now, but, it, but it's, it's just as simple as that. At the time, we didn't experience anything better than that. So that was fine. 20 years later, we have better endgame than endless, you know, bail runs. And that's why endless drill runs don't work as well. The other issue I think with drill runs is the reset is a little annoying. Um, you can kind of chain bail runs faster, whereas with drill runs, there's all that like kind of downtime of like exiting the tunnel, be running through it, which is a bit tedious. Like the amount of time you spend doing the run versus the amount of time setting up the run is disproportionate. I think drill runs would be a lot better received if you could just. Um, stay in that room and keep respawning Duriel. But even at that, um, like they've added, they've also added a bigger loop to the experience with having to farm the other bosses and stuff, which is good in some ways and bad in other ways. But I never did bar runs, but did you also have to farm tedious, clunky no. open world content for hours and kill two other bosses multiple times just to attempt one run? Not for that, but you did have to do that for, um, not for bail runs, but for uh, Uber Diablo runs. Or whatever they were called. But yeah, there was the Ubers, yeah. So the Ubers in uh, D2. Because it's not it's not equivalent, right? Like, Bale Runs was just the... Bale Runs was your Nightmare Dungeons. Like, there was nothing to do other than Bale Runs at the end game, basically. Asterisk, I know there was other things. But Bale Runs are more akin to Dungeons. And Dural Runs are more akin to Ubers in D2. Which did require you farming all these mats to do. Um... Yeah, that's basically that, I guess. Although, doing the Ubers, you were guaranteed a drop, right? Whereas with Duriel, you're not guaranteed a... Well, yeah, I guess you are guaranteed. You're not guaranteed an Uber unique. Yeah, for the most part, I, like, I think anything from D2 that doesn't hold up today is just a matter of, we're 20 years later, we expect better from games. Uh, not because D2 was bad, but just because things have progressed and evolved since then. Like, D2's po like, potion system is absolute ass. If that was in a game today, I would hate it. But at the time, we didn't know better, and that's fine. Listening to the worst and best moo I've ever heard. Moo, 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 moo. Those cows sound like a bored teenager being lectured for the 14th, 11th time. So I think every employee on the team uh, actually got one of their moos in there. Oh, the Gala map is up on healthize.com slash Gala. Thank you, Plenty TV. Okay, Blaith saying that the reason he doesn't like Gauntlet as a competitive player, it's repetitive, you don't get anything out of it either, and maybe this is more of an aside, but we players who are in competitive communities know that most of the tops in those ladders use macros, and it's something that I just don't support at all. Oh. Okay. Energizer saying, if you can take one thing from each of the big ERPGs and put it into one, what would it be? From D2, D3, D4, Last Epoch, Pee Wee, Wicked, and Wilson. Big question. Uh, and my hesitation is needing to pick only one thing from each 
and not have them overlap. Oof. Um, okay, Wolson is easy. It's the city building aspect. That sort of meta progression of building up your city. Last Epoch, skill tree. Easy. PoE, end game meta progression systems. Like the Atlas of Worlds. Um, Wicked is a little harder just because the game isn't out yet. It's also, like, again, it's it's almost standalone in its own right. Where, like, all those other games are very similar to each other. And Wicked is just something so different. Yeah, and, like, I'm not experienced enough of, of Wicked as well. So I'm going to put Wicked aside. Not because I don't think there's anything good in it, but just it's not... Uh, it's, I don't think it's fair right now to include it in the conversation uh, alongside like completed games that have been out for a long time. So D2, D3, D4. D4. Um, oh shoot, I can't take itemization now from Last Epoch or PoE. Fuck. Uh, D2 itemization then. Um, so between D4 and D3. D3 combat, D4 visuals. Deliberate and weighted. Those are the good words to use for that style of combat. Yes, lop and K. Good call. Crew hole TV. Hello. Thanks for coming by. Oh, awesome. Well, hello to you and your wife. Hope you're doing great. I'm absolutely loving Last Epoch, Mike Mayer, for sure. Taoist monkey. Oh, for real. Was that back when I was uh, doing D&D content? No, I guess I'm going to be probably when I just started D3 content. Yeah, grow mass. I, I like. I, I look forward to when you can see the other interview, which is actually not coming up this week anymore. But with uh, Thomas and Gennady, both the co-founders, I think it's a, it's an even better one. Yeah, they gave amazing answers. Is Pew 2s new skill system similar to Last Epoch, where each skill gems have their own tree? No, I don't think so. Mid-J saying, D4 is like someone who knows how to make a Diablo game, described how to do it to someone else, who then found a third person and told them how to make it. Oh, like a game of telephone. Uh, McGuero saying, is D4 ever going to have a Paladin type class? Um, I don't know. I think that depends on if D4 is a successful game that continues to have expansions every two years. Uh, or every year. If so, yes. Hello? That's not getting me this time. I've grown immune to it. I've grown immune to the Discord bleep. <laughs> Not today. That one almost got me. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so if D4 is successful in the long run, then yes, it'll eventually get a Paladin type class. If not, then I don't think so. Like, like, if it doesn't live long enough to get a, cl a Paladin class, then no. Now I'm saying it, it's easier for Wicked because it is a completely new game. It doesn't have the baggage of a predecessor or three. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So it's easier for Wicked to make that leap because 
it doesn't have the baggage of a previous game exactly, right? Zaya saying, in D2, Mang Song's lesson wasn't necessary for 99% of the builds, as is Shaco in D4. Shaco is not necessary for any build in D4. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Are we really saying that you need a Shaco in every build? That's not the case. Can every build benefit from one? Yes. Can you destroy all the content in the game without a Shaco? Also yes. Dead saying, I went back to D2 a year ago and absolutely hated the experience. The game aged horribly. It's a tough sell for people that don't have the nostalgia for it. And even at that, like, it, it shows its age. D2R did a great, did the best job you could possibly do with it, but it still shows its age. Uber Tristram, thank you. Uber Tristram is what it's called. Thank you, Flint Westwood. Yes. Hey, that's, that's cool, Taoist. That's cool, man. The shoulder pads from Wilson. There you go. What about the super long legs? Fable saying, gotta ask because you're a fan of lore. I heard a nasty rumor that the Nephilim from D3 are retconned or might be. Is that true? If so, it literally ruins the entire D3 story and the ending of D2. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing confirmed, but it's possible that... Well... <sighs> Retcon is a strong word. As of right now, I don't think anything specifically retcons them out. I think the reason that we first started to think that might be the case was way back. They released a video where, I, if I remember correctly, they did not call the Heroes of D3. Right, right, okay. The retcon, I think, was that they implied it was multiple heroes in D3 as opposed to the one Nephilim. Which, the story of D3 makes pretty clear it's the one Nephilim. Um, but, like, ultimately, D4's story doesn't make any mention of the Nephilim at all. So, what has happened to the Nephilim? I mean, what do you do when you have this ultra-powerful godlike being and you want to tell a story that isn't about them? It's a little hard. You kind of just ignore them, I guess. You skip ahead 50 years, you hope no one brings up the Nephilim anymore. Uh, maybe we'll find out about the Nephilim. You know, who knows? We'll have to see. Uh, but like... I don't know about it literally ruining the entire D3 story. Wait, how does it ruin the ending of D2, actually? Maybe tell me more about that. Maybe I haven't heard the rumor that you've heard. Joseph's saying, Diablo 1, first encounter with the Butcher and Diablo, you have that dread feeling and you panic. From their attacks, Diablo as an encounter uh, with Andariel, or Diablo 2 encounter with Andariel, of course. Duril again, the panic. Balaam in some interesting way, in the very, very far future. But what interests me more is, where is Tyrael? Where is Tyrael indeed? Tyrael is mentioned in D4's story. He's sort of like, oh, he's off on the side here. Why did Tyrael run away? Um, yeah, and Daryl, Duriel, the panic when Daryl's attacking you, of course. Bale, D3 encounter with Asmodan and Belial, Diablo 4 meeting Lilith. Yeah, all, all great moments for sure. How high was my first Gauntlet score? I think it was 254. Cocky BV saying it would be it would have been great if they introduced an overlay map together with the gauntlet patch. That would have made so much sense since you look at the map a lot. Fair. Leandro saying Wicked is this encumbrance mechanic. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It makes different builds without making the whole game different. Yeah, so Wicked has this really interesting encumbrance mechanic where it's not about what what items you're holding in your like equipment it's about what items you have actually equipped on you where your build is either classified as light medium or heavy and it doesn't mean heavy is just the worst and the slowest they each feel different to play 
So you might want a light build or you might want a heavy build or you might want a medium build. It's all about customizing uh, and because it affects, literally affects like the timing of your attacks and how fast you parry. Your dodge roll is different. Um, like it's an actual roll if you're medium or heavy, but if you're light, it's a quick jump as opposed to a, a, a roll. Like, yeah. Bricked up saying, I noticed wicked items had similar affix to D4. Example, 30% damage, one full HP. Maybe current D4 optimization works in that type of gameplay. Instead of the blaster style, makes me think if early D4 prototype were Souls-like combat, similar to wicked, but changed midway to D3. I feel as though the wicked team does not like the conditional affixes in D4. They inadvertently, I mean, okay, they, they pretty explicitly shit on it. When they say they don't like the whole, you know, maybe I sometimes get 5% more damage on a Tuesday. Like, he, Thomas has said something to that effect. So, I don't think there's a lot of those conditional type things. Um, I know that the MO with the affixes in Wicked were like just give me affixes that feel good is is kind of like the quote from thomas just give me affixes that feel good um that they're simple to understand you don't have to wonder is this an upgrade is this not um and i would say from looking at the affixes that i've seen from memory i don't remember there being like a lot of very conditional affixes how you doing neek Yeah, sorry, Gromas. The second interview video is actually going to be pushed back to closer to early access now. 100% D4 is going to bring back Diablo as a boss. I think either in Expansion 1 we're going to fight Diablo or Expansion 1 will at least tease Diablo. Probably not fight Diablo in Expansion 1, but at the very least, like, he might pop up as the teaser at the end. So that Expansion 3, we fight him. Did you hear that Magic Legends rebranded, changing its name to Logic Legends Resurgence? That's hilarious. I did not hear that. Wow. The new Zoltan Cool video they released hints at the end story of D3. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fair, Josh Went. Bricked up saying, in my opinion, it feels like D4 is an outlier in terms of the story from the rest of the series. D3 still felt connected with the Diablo IP, while D4 felt, felt very disconnected. Huh. Um, I guess for me, it felt super connected just because Lilith and Inarius are characters that are super important in the deeper lore of Diablo. But I could, I guess, understand if you're just paying attention to the story in the game, right? Like, you don't see Diablo. Uh, you kind of see Mephisto, I guess, but... Yeah, D4 can almost pass as, instead of being Diablo 4, it's like some other game in the Diablo universe... That's involving, you know, Lilith and Anarius, as opposed to, well, it's a Diablo game. Of course, you must fight Diablo at the end. Mo saying, didn't Lilith and whatever his name spoke about their son, which they meant the Nephilim? No, this, they meant Rothma. Wasn't D3 spoken that there were multiple ones, that they were all children of angels and demons? Yeah, so so when they're talking about their son, they're talking about Rothma. They kill Rothma to get the, the uh, Inarius kills Rothma in order to get the key to the gate to hell. He's like literally their son. We're figuratively their children, but he's literally their son. We 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 see his corpse in the game. Aren't the powers of the Nephilim unlocked because of Tyrrell destroying the stone? Yes. I could have misunderstood. No, you're correct. My thought is if they retcon the Nephilim from three, then it takes from the D3 story, but also ruins one of the key aspects of the stone being destroyed. 
Um, well, so I haven't seen any retcons in that regard, right? Like, so the idea is now that, so the, the, the world stone was modified to dampen the powers of the Nephilim. So we turn into regular human scrubs. Following the destruction of the World Stone, which at this point in D4 times is 70 years ago, uh, in D3 times it was 20 years ago. Following the destruction of the World Stone, the, our latent Nephilim powers have been starting to emerge. Realistically, you can still say that that's the case in D4, right? Like, us people who reach level 100, we are maybe the ones who have our Nephilim power awakening more than these poor plebs who are just schmucking around selling apples, right? It's not directly referenced, but that could just be because our characters are just not aware of that, right? Here's saying, I think it also ruins D2's ending. Destruction of the World Stone should logically remove the nerf cast on humanity by Anarius. I think would make sense considering what happened in D3. So th that's true, but in order to reach the true Nephilim... Wait, hold on. Yeah, well, I mean, so like we, we don't know how long it would take for power Nephilim powers to reemerge, right? We don't really know what mechanic... Like, is it... Like, it was generations of breeding human plebs where we went from being seven foot tall monster Nephilim down to like regular kind of human Nephilim, right? So is it something that more so needs to happen as part of our birthright? Is it something that like, like, I, you know, it's not really explained what the mechanic is behind these powers. Like it's clearly not oh, world stone is destroyed. Now we're all level a million characters that can obliterate people. Right. Um, maybe you need to learn to harness the power. Like, I think it's more about potential, where we had our potential capped with the World Stone. Uh, maybe, you know, and it made us all forget about how to even activate our Nephilim powers. So maybe now that it's like, okay, think of it this way, because this, this is a very true and real life example. You raise an elephant with a chain around its ankle, and you... Um, Hammer that chain down into a little uh, um, a python, and this 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 poor elephant, its whole life grows up. It can only walk in this like three foot little radius. Uh, it it knows once you take off the manacle off its ankle, it could walk further out. But as soon as it puts the manacle back on, the little baby elephant is not strong enough to pull that thing out of the ground. So what happens? Elephant grows into an adult elephant, and this is a real this is this is true. Elephant grows into an adult elephant, and you put that chain on its ankle, and it thinks, I cannot exit this three-foot radius. Even though it is ten times as strong as it needs to be to pull that python out, it's called learned helplessness. In its formative years, it learned it is not strong enough or it cannot do something. Um, so that even when it's an adult, it's going to still have that mentality and it needs to basically be taught actually you you can you are not actually constrained so in the same way we can have a sort of learned helplessness with the nephilim where one we don't even know that we're nephilim right like 99.999 percent of the population has no idea what nephilim are or that we used to be nephilim or that the destruction of the world stone means we can activate powers so yeah, maybe every individual person could become powerful like a Nephilim, but they don't know how. Eight months ago, and forced me to sub, and here I am still subbing. <laughs> Learned helplessness, sad. <laughs> Jay Howe coming up on the 100 Club. Man, we are we are two months away from 100 Club people coming up. <laughs> Love it, Jay Howe. Hope we're doing well. My theory is there's sidelining Tyrell until Diablo comes back. If he comes back, yeah, could be. I would definitely like to see Tyrael again, and I'm sure Diablo will. I'm, I'm more sure Diablo will come back than Tyrael. Dangered51. Six month resub, rocking that half year badge. Appreciate you, man. Rogue saying, seems like. Only my first Gala score registered on the leaderboard. I'm sure that will get sorted out, but kind of a bummer when I made good improvements from the original run. I, there seems like some delay, I guess. 
in the processing of the score sometimes. Fable Fortitude's going to die on the hill that Rothma isn't truly dead. Well, no one's ever really gone. I do think he's dead, but I think it's possible for him to come back. Like, I think he's literally dead, but I don't think that means he cannot come back. Most thing, but I mean, in D3, every character class was an Ephilim, but I'm not sure if the main story follows one, not many. The main story follows one, right? So, depending on... I need that question answered by the Diablo story, Law Devs. Why did they do that to Rathma? <laughs> Literally one of the most important and overpowered law characters. Literally a true son of Lilith and Anarius. He gets off screened. WTF. I'm serious. This is bothering me so much. I need to see some reason in this. It's like TLJ level of writing. There must be a reason. I refuse to believe they did this just like that. Not like this now hearing. Rathma makes my brain cells die of cringe. Help. Well, maybe it's following the old rule of if someone dies off screen, they're not really dead. <laughs> Oh, cheers, curious. Uh, but yeah, so so Diablo 3. One character is the Nephilim. It's whatever character class you're playing, that character is the Nephilim, right? So there's, you know, 14 different endings, depending on whether you're playing a male or female of whatever class. And that character in your version of the story, that one person is the Nephilim. The Nephilim is one person. Maybe they were helped by people. But, like, it's following the story of one person, and that person's rise as the singular Nephilim. So what happens after D3 is you have to canonically decide whose version of the story is the real version. In Diablo 1, for instance, there's three endings. If, depending on who kills Diablo, that's the person that puts the soul stone in the head. You're either the rogue, you're the warrior, or you're the mage. But what happens in Diablo 2, they have to pick one canonical ending. And they decided that it's the warrior who put the thing in his head. They say that the other two are there to help him, but only one of those three is the one to, to shove the thing in his head. One ending has to be decided to be the canonical ending. So likewise, we need one ending to have been chosen to be the canonical ending of D3. Who is the Nephilim? The Nephilim must have been one singular person. Now, they don't have to ever answer that question. Even if they talk about the Nephilim in D4, they never have to tell us who it was, Elias right? They can get away Rathma's with that. Rathma's teachings to achieve immortality. What's a bigger plot hole than Rathma being dead? A Rathma that didn't know how to follow his own instructions to achieve immortality. Maybe they're saving it for an expansion. Maybe they're saving it for an expansion, yeah. Cheers, Fable. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point. He taught the immortality trick. Yeah, uh, Worthy is the best rank you can get, exactly. Rothma was also trained by Tragul. is likely beyond regular systems of mortality. He's the ultimate necromancer. Most likely, he's with Tragul now. Yeah, yeah. So it could be he's now... He's shed his mortal coil. Maybe he doesn't even see reason to come back to Sanctuary. He is off in spirit land with Tragul fighting cosmic threats. He's fighting Cthulhu now. And the matters of Sanctuary are beneath him. He is fighting the, the cosmic balance. Zaya Singh, are you saying that Hoda Barb, Bones Through Necro, Lightning Ball, Sorceress, etc., One Tapping, Uber Lilith aren't Nephilim? Well, that's the thing. We are all Nephilim. But when the story refers to the Nephilim in D3, it's the one person. But technically, we are all Nephilim. So that's why, like, you can argue, well, okay, D2, Worldstone destroyed. That's why now we have all these powerful characters emerging. They're learning to harness their Nephilim powers. That's why we're one-tapping Uber Lilith. Mo saying, I don't want to get into weird topics. Oh, let's get into all the weird topics. What are you talking about? Uh, isn't the idea in the IRL written books that way before humans, there were humans with wings and powers unlike what we think of right now, almost like the idea of Nephilims? 
if you mean in Diablo books, they didn't have wings. But yeah, the, the early Nephilim were bigger, larger than life kind of characters, yeah. Mommy, is my puppy okay? Yes, he's with Tragul now. <laughs> oh, gosh. And Lorath is harnessing the bottle. I love it. I've not watched the TV show Shogun yet. No, I've heard good things. He became a forest ghost. How great. Rothma can stay gone if we see Imperius again. I mean, I would like to see both, ultimately, but yeah, I want to see Imperius come down as a villain, finally. He's going to lead the angelic horde to invade Sanctuary. And that's going to be when we get our holy character at it. Alright, folks, that's going to be our stream for today. I got to get going. I got to bring my mom somewhere. But uh, we're going to thank everybody for coming on by. Got our first look at the gauntlet. And uh, had some great chats about other things. Always love chatting. So we're going to thank everybody for coming on by. We're going to thank our mods for overseeing things. We're going to give a big thanks to our supporters. We're going to thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of your evening, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.